I can't call it. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Javier Mendez live stream with special guest Will Harris, Anatomy of a Fighter, Dagestan Chronicles, you name it. We're going to talk a little story first and uh, catch up with Will. It's been a while. Um, also, you know, then we'll get to the questions. So please leave them in the comments. We'll definitely gonna be hitting them up. I know you get some plenty of questions for him because you were sending them to me on our community page. So how have you been, Will? I'm, I'm good, man. I, I can't complain. It's, uh, I'm here in the Midwest right now in Chicago, uh, getting ready for a trip. I got to go film some fighters this fight next week, uh, in South Florida. So I'm back on the, the travel train in the next couple of weeks. So I'm just resting up. You got to, I know what kind of energy that takes. You're a one man production show. You get a film, you get to edit, you get to put it up there. You get a, they're sleeping, you're editing. <laughs> That's how it works when yeah. you're on go, right? Yeah. You know, you know, I, I try to tell people that, you know, when I put stuff together, I edit in real time. Um, I'm seeing a shot. I mean, I, I can take, for example, I remember when we was in uh, Dubai and I interviewed Hav on the by the cage, you know, after the guys is practicing and everything that he's saying, I'm computing. So I already know what I'm going to use when I get back to the hotel. It's just pretty easy for me. And, you know, I see certain things and I just know how I want to tell a story a specific day. But, you know, now because I really don't do fight weeks anymore, you know, I've created a new series called Seven Days Out, which I go spend you know, a week before, you know, fight week with a fighter. And I'm able to just tell a more complete story instead of like this day by day vlog style of docuseries. And I, I've been loving that more because it gives me more flexibility to dive deeper into a, a athlete's story instead of just documenting what's going on fight week. Well, in fight week, you've also get everybody cutting, you know, that's, that's the deal. But, uh, so I was going to ask Hav, when is the first time that you met, uh, Will? Where were you at? Dagestan or Dubai? Boston. Boston? Was it? No, it wasn't Boston. No. Can you hear us off? No, you you got, there's, uh, everybody's talking and it doesn't ever stop. You guys are still talking even though you're not talking. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. This thing's all jacked up, dude. I. I... Welcome to a live cast. Lo, lo, you know what I did, Hob? I logged in and logged out. I'm going to log in log out because... Okay. Do, do you still, guys are still talking. And now you now you know what I did, Hob. I logged in logged out. Try it. I'm getting out. Okay. I'm out of here. <laughs> come back. Don't leave, I'm, coach. I'm out. <laughs> Try to come back in. That's how it works. Well, well, hopefully, Coach gets back in here. He's getting he's getting reverb like the feed is going slow to him. He's getting yeah. little the latency, well, I, right? I know. I I, I met Hav uh, two twenty three weekend. Okay, because uh, he was there in Boston for the DC Vulcan fight, but I didn't meet him. You see what I'm saying? Hav, I'm you yeah, I'm here now. Okay, Can you yeah. hear us live now? Yeah, no. Before it was right, like him, ask him, Lynn, what you were saying. <laughs> yeah. Talking in circles. He's like, stop torturing me. <laughs> Let me ask him. I'll come back to you. Well, I got a lot to ask you because I listened to a whole podcast on you today, the Joe Rogan, three and a half hours. I had to get down and get my product knowledge up. So, Waste of time. you know, hey, man, I had to go deep. So let's go. So, Hob, do you remember meeting Will? What was the first time you met him and then saw his stuff pop up on the Internet? Uh, I believe it was New York. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it was in New York. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I believe it was New York, and, and uh, he was uh, doing the Chronicles, uh, not Habib at that point. Who were you doing then? I was doing Habib, and then I was doing the, the guys from Boston. That there was, you go, uh, the Boston, the Boston yeah, guys. Cater, yeah, Rob, Rob Font, and all those guys. Yeah, so yeah. I was like bouncing, bouncing from room to room that week. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. you're but going that's back, and forth, that back was an and epic, forth. That was an epic week to meet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to say the least, right? Yeah. Were you on that bus that get attacked? Was he, he there? No, he, he got it. some great footage of it. Though. Will's got some the best footage, I believe. I believe he got yeah, the best how, footage out of anybody. On, were you on the bus, however, or no? No, no, no. I remember I was there and you told me 
you you got some you got the footage of the whole you, thing happening. Did you did you walk back with your son? Uh, no, no, we didn't go at all. I stayed. I always stay uh, behind when Habib does those things. If I'm like not the needed, media day, the media yeah, day, stuff. anything yeah. media day with any of the guys, if they don't need me there, I ain't going. The only person that kind of recommends or actually wanted me there, like at the weigh-ins and all that, was DC. All yeah. the other guys, they don't care whether I'm there or not. So if they don't care, then I don't want to be there. Uh, yeah. Damn, you know that's over three years ago now. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, yeah. So, honestly, man, I, I've told that story of the bus so long, it's annoying, to be honest. It's, it's just like... So I would think by now we'd be looking at you uh, receiving an Academy Award for Best Producer. And or they should be. Like that. They should have cut. Listen, Hob, I don't know if you know this story, and I've been telling it lately, and I told it to Ali the other day. I swear on my life, lightning kills me right now. If you want to know the, the character of Habib, this is the first fight week I've ever had with him ever. I met him in Boston when DC fought Vulcan. Yeah. So I had saw Hav in Boston, but I didn't talk to him at that time. So when the Conor McGregor thing happened and he threw the dollar, everybody still was foggy about who, what, what was going on until I say, till I was like that, that was Conor McGregor. I have the footage. So while, wow, you know, Conor, you know, he always say, oh, you were scared. We back at the back of the bus looking at the footage. I'll never forget this. This what Javi said. He said he looked at the footage. He saw Connor throw the dolly through the window. Ali, uh, Ali, everybody is right there. Uh, Ear Latifi, we all just sitting in the middle of the, the bus, the small lane, looking at the footage. Rose is over there in the corner still doing rolls. And um, Habib looked at the footage and he said, he looked at Ali and he said, brother, sell this for Will. This is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, he deserves this, sells this. Ali going to say, no, brother, they'll take his credential away. I don't give a fuck about that credential. Give me this money. <laughs> give me the money. <laughs> what, are you what are you talking about credential and access? Man, give me the, this is my TMZ moment, if that's the case. And it's the funny thing about that is the, the fallout of that was I didn't get anything for it. So, but Habib is the first person to say, Ali, sell this footage. This is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. He, he, cares, he cares about the cameraman. He do. He man. does. He, he was looking, he was looking out. And then Hav, when they Connor and him fought that week, the UFC used a lot of my clips from Habib Dagestan. And I remember Habib, I went over to, to the house where they was fight week in Vegas. And he's like, brother, why are they using all your stuff? They didn't pay you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he was that selfish to think about that stuff. It's him, but he's saying, Will, this is your footage. Yeah. Brother, they need to be paying you. They're using all your stuff. So it was funny. Yeah, so, that's the way he is. Yeah, that's just how he is. That's, that's how he is, yeah. It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's just funny. Everybody uses your stuff, you know, and then uh, they, they get the credit and they get the money. You know, well, you do things and they all do that. Y'all understand it now because y'all get y'all stuff ripped all the time, too. All the time. Big time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, you, know, you, might know. Have, you, you might have 100 million views on your channel, but there's 500 million views of your footage, right? Yeah, Am I all, right? Well, all our footage. Me and me and me and Brian. I'm here too. I'm here too. Me, me and Brian always talk like that. Me and I and Bay. I'm like, bro, bro, we missing out on a lot of money because <laughs> they use our stuff. Yeah. All the time. But one time we did get paid. Some company. I gave somebody a strike on YouTube, right? And they was begging me to take the strike off, and I was like, y'all got to PayPal me right now. And they and they was able to pay me pay me some money for use because they wanted that strike removed. You get three strikes on YouTube, you out of there, you know? Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, some, if it's something like, yo, I didn't, you know, if I put out an episode and then they immediately rip it and then it's in Russian subtitles, I don't care about that. But you're going to have to pay me, though, because I always explain this to people like, y'all see these views and y'all see 400,000 a million. That's not a lot of money. Nope. I need every view I could get, you know? Yeah. 
Now we're with you on that. It's a great discussion. Hav knows he sees his Instagram uh, go. He puts up a he puts up a post. He gets eight hundred thousand views, and then he looks over at another Instagram. There's the same post getting eight million views. No, not Instagram. Not Instagram. YouTube. 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 Hey, but well, Hav, you it's AKA all you getting your whole brand stolen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it don't even matter. You are yeah. a whole nother level. That's a whole uh, nother level. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting done everywhere I go, huh? Yeah, that's like if I look and somebody had like a Natty Me of a Fighter channel, and it was just like they just stole a whole name. And my stuff is copywritten federal federally, yeah. international. You can't even take it, but that's a similar to when you know they got aka everywhere in around everywhere the world. yeah <laughs> they built other gyms in some countries and didn't didn't honor that and that wasn't cool I know, so. Hob's so polite he don't even really go crazy about it like, not he's like yeah what are you gonna do yeah that's what you said to me one time man what what can you do you can't do anything about it mm-hmm. you well, have, it, it, it's kind of like the ufc right uh when i was in mexico the ufc as you know will you do anything that says ufc They'll come on you real quick. When, when we went to Mexico for some of the fights over there, you see right next to the arena all these peddlers out there that have UFC apparel everywhere. And I go, well, hey, you guys go after everybody. How come you don't go after them? They go, man, there's just too many of them. And they're moms and pops. And we'd spend all day just trying to get at them. And what are we going to get? We're not going to get yeah, nothing. Yeah. You're not suing everybody in Mexico. Not going to happen. Even if you sue them, doesn't matter. You're not making a dime out of it. They're not going to pay you. They don't. They don't really enforce that over there that well. So they're just wasting their wheels. So so it happens to everybody. But it, it, for for me as a gym, me as a person, it probably happens to me more than most people. Where I don't do anything about it. Does it affect the gym in a good way by any means? Like advertising for the gym, you think, just for it, memberships? It can. It can be a negative or a positive. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it can definitely be a negative and a positive. I can't, yeah, I mean, if, I can't if say either. Was, yeah, somebody was using your brand and something happened, an uh, instructor in another place. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you affiliate it, it's You're affiliated. affiliated. Yeah, and then it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 you're in trouble, yeah. We yeah. have a licensing deal, so, so people that do something wrong in the licensing deal situation – yeah, it affects us, you know, and uh, we we, I, we do have a morals clause on there. So if yeah. someone does something, you know, that, that's not the conduct of an AKA brand, we can take it out. And and trust me, if something happens with that nature or where I see some of these guys getting accused of certain certain things that are not proper, they, they, they'll lose their license. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the, the plight of Will because... You know, he works, he comes out of his camera and then it goes to everyone else's channel. And I've had it done too. And I'm like, first I'm like, cool, look, they really like my stuff. And then that cuteness wears off real quick, especially when this is your primary living and you got to find a way to circumvent that. And I, I was thinking for you, well, just as another guy that's looked at this whole thing, we all get a little angle. You could probably tell us something. We could tell you something. I think if you had a Patreon regarding your productions these are just people that like your footage it just supports the next thing instead of your rev ads on the youtube you know what i mean yeah, for sure. and i think that would be a smart move because i listen you, you like what i make you want me to make more help me stay alive and get my travel money and my camera money you know what i mean i i, I have some things um i have some things that are you know that are about to put me in uh blessed situations uh in la and um you gotta understand, like, I never intended to be around this sport that long. You know, I started off in South Florida with those guys down in, you Henry know, uh, the Black Zillions. Now they're Sanford MMA, the Henry Hoof crew, and it, it was literally a. It, 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 I was doing what Brian and Carlos do. I was right. just in the gym every day, right? Right. It didn't matter about no fight weeks. I was just coming in documenting the daily gym grind. And then it was like, yo, you want to come to a fight? And I'm like, all right, but you got to pay me, right? It wasn't until maybe like a year in, I realized like just the the severity of just income of these fighters where I was just like, I cannot, you know, <clears throat> I had a lucrative wedding business. I was making two, three $300,000 a year doing that. So I could afford to just do this on the side. 
So when I realized like a lot of these guys wasn't making any money, I was like, I can't charge these guys. When Henry Hoof is telling me half the gym haven't paid their gym fee. You see what I'm saying? I'm thinking they, like, yeah, they're yeah, struggling. So, like, so it's, it's crazy because it's like, I'm like, Mark Henry always tells me this every time I see him. He says, why don't you film other athletes, bro? It ain't no money in this sport. He tells me that every <laughs> time I see him. And I'm like, yo, man, I don't care about the companies, the whole, the, you know, obviously, like, with guys like Ali, these, they like family, they brothers. But I don't care about the managers. I care about these fighters. So once you grow to develop a relationship, and I, I can, Haas can attest, like, Haas can attest, those are like his kids. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's yeah. like it's a different type of relationship where you don't really think about the financial aspect of it. Well, how I will, because he has a business. And for me, it was more of the access was the money to me. Like, I didn't need any. I'll, I'm going to create whatever I create with what I can get. But then it, 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 it got so big to where you realize, like, I want to do more and more and more and more and expand. Listen, I could have did the anatomy of Khabib, Hav. I didn't have to do no other fighter, right? <laughs> yeah. If right. that was the case, I could have just did anatomy of Habib. I probably had way more subscribers right now. I could have just did all the Dagestan guys, some of the Chechnyan guys, and my yeah. channel would probably be two, three million subscribers right now. Probably. If I only focused on them because that's yeah. less time for me to worry. I just wait till they come in America. I'll go to the fights. I'll go overseas and that's it. Now I never have to expand and do any other fight. Because it, to, yeah, it put you on the map. It put you on the map, just like me, you know. I mean, all the champions I've trained, you know, I'm known for really one person worldwide, Habib. That's it. Yeah. You know, all the contacts, all this. No one knows. Not many people all the way around know all the champions I've ever trained. No one. But everybody knows I trained Habib. And, yeah. and uh, he's the only one that, for me, Really, on a business level, on a business level, he's the only one that, that I only have to say. I don't have to trade, say, oh, I train DC, I train this, I train. I don't have to say nothing. This, no. I don't even have to say I train Abid. It's weird. Say, it's weird, right? You got yeah. these legendary fighters, Luke Rock, Hold DC, Kane, Velasquez. Like all Many more. Yeah. And then it's like, Abid. If Habib. I go, like I did, I just did this documentary on Gable Stevenson, who should be an AKA with all them wrestlers, right? They just won the gold medal. Yeah, everybody's after him. So when I was around like his his handlers and they introduced me to people, they was like, oh, yeah, this is Will Harris. He does stuff with Khabib. I'm like, yo, I have a series called Anatomy of a Fighter. They got a <laughs> hundred different documentaries on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I get it. I get it. But listen, you know, I know y'all can understand like y'all DMs and Listen, I posted something the other day, and it was like, brother, when are you going to feel in Islam? I'm thinking, like, bro, this post had nothing to do with even fighting. Why are you giving <laughs> me in my story about something else? Brother, why don't you film Islam? Or is something going on? Y'all don't, y'all not friends no more? I'm just thinking yeah. about stuff like, I get it. I get it. A, 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 half of the fan base is because of how I be, but I'm trying to grow the brand. So I have to expand and do other stuff like, you know, and it's frustrating sometimes, but it is what it is. Now we get it. Once you're under the Habib spell, you're under the Habib spell, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm doing a anatomy of Javier Mendez. That's <laughs> <laughs> the podcast. Now he's got, he's got the inside scoop. He's got a cool story and he's been around it from the beginning. And yeah, that's what I thought. Documentary on Hob. That's the real question. I I worked on one. I got part of something, but it's it's uh, no a long story. Nobody's approached you yet. A little Netflix uh, documentary or something. Um, some people have always been talking about me writing a book, and they want to yeah. send a ghostwriter with me. And I just yeah. keep I keep declining. I keep you declining. Keep, right now, right now, it ain't uh, I still keep declining. I said no. Uh, but, but they've been after me since 2010. Yeah. And I've been just no. What, who, let me ask you, Hav, how many camera guys have you seen come and go in your time in the YouTube era? You know, between like well, me, I, Will, I, Carlos, I start, yeah. you know, Brian. I know Brian's steady strong. He's been there a long time. No, the but, real question, Lynn, should be 
<clears throat> how many have come throughout AKA and you allowed to be there? That's the real question. That's a yeah, better question. Did. Better phrasing. Thank you. Yeah, not, 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 uh, I mean, where I let stay. I've let people come in, but I don't let stay. I, I really, you know, like, of course, you know, Will would be one of the most welcome one, like you, Len, and, and uh, Carlos and uh, Brian uh, would be welcome uh, always because there's no, there's no, there's no issues. Other yeah. ones that could cause issues for one reason, their fault or not their fault, it's kind of hard, you know, because I, I need someone that grooves right in, that fits like this, right? It's like right in there, you know, versus... You go. You got. You got people button heads. I don't need them in my gym. It's kind of hard, you know. Yeah. And uh, you guys would would fit in perfect because you guys, you know, like if you if you all both of you guys came in and Carlos and, and Brian were filming all together, you guys would all get along great and you'll be yeah, sure. We know how to blend. We've, yeah. we've mitigated you'll, those. Yeah, we, yeah, nobody's in nobody way. Nobody you guys will help. Yeah, way. you guys will help with each other. Hey, you got this? Oh yeah, or you should film it this way. You feel that way? I've seen it already with you guys. So. Um, but you have to have that. If you don't have that, then anybody doesn't have that kind of, of unity where they can come in and just groove like you're saying. Well, I would just say, hey, I can't have you here. You know, uh, as it stands right now, I only I've only approved two people now, and it's it's really just those two, all 24 seven, like 24 yeah. seven. I'm not talking about other people coming in. Other people can come in, but there's certain times where I can't have them there for being a manager doesn't want them there or something or another, some of them want them there and I have to be politically correct and, and work it out. But uh, in general, it, it's a tough, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. What is part of that? Have like the trust factor, the knowing, like not showing footage, the training, like as a coach, what do you look for? Uh, just no, I'm not looking for none of that. I'm just looking for them to be able to get along. You know, that's it. That's I'm not looking for them. I haven't found anybody that's sharing stuff where they shouldn't share. I, I haven't had that at all. But I just need them to get be able to get along with the fighters, get along with the coaches, get along with everybody. And then that's what you guys all are able to do. So therefore, there's always the doors always open uh, for 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 you guys. But for, and Carlos and Brian, but other people, whether it be them or whether it be in management or whether it be fighters, they have issues. So I, I don't want them in my gym because it causes too much problems. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's like, I'm going to ask, well, it's like, do you realize pretty quickly what an intricate piece Javier was to the whole picture? I bet because he's been, he was the, he was like there, man. I realized yeah, he, the story started I, with him. When I know? first met him, I just knew he was the coach to Luke DC Kane and Habib wasn't the champion yet. So it was like Habib was just this, you got to understand when I even heard of Habib was when Michael Johnson fought him and I, I didn't know anything of him. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I was around boxing. I was doing the boxing. I was around the Vander Holyfields and the Riddick Bowles and the Shannon Briggs and the Michael Moores in South Florida, like in the Klitschko's. I was around those guys all the time doing exactly what I'm doing now, but I just wasn't putting it on YouTube. I was just making clips, putting it out there. And when Michael Johnson fought Habib, I'll never forget this. He paid me a thousand dollars. He said, Bro, I'm, I'm finna fight this guy from Russia. Uh, they say he might be the champ. And, you know, I got to go in there and do what I got to do. And I want to do like a weekly vlog on you on Instagram. When Instagram was only, remember when it was 15 seconds? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It was 15 and it changed to 30. I think at that time it might have been 30 seconds. So we was able to just put out little teasers. I wasn't putting anything out on YouTube, but... I just remember just looking at a highlight. I will never forget this. And I hopefully Mike don't kill me. So I looked at a highlight of Habib because I was like, who is this Russian they talking about? I, I do just remember seeing that guy with the hat, but I didn't know that was Habib. <laughs> I thought his hair was like that. I thought it was some super cyan dot, whatever. So I remember looking at the highlight, and I think it was the Abel Trujillo fight. Oh, just I was like. <laughs> Mike is about to get killed. So <laughs> it's famous video online of Michael J Johnson and Kamaru Uzman sparring. Michael Johnson, back, Hob, you contested this. Back then when Mike fought Habib, Mike was top five lightweight. He yeah. was scary with the hands. Like yeah. stand up was crazy. And crazy. it was so one-sided. Typically, like with, with Michael Johnson versus Kamaru back then, because, you know, he was still trying to learn how to strike. But when he took him to the ground 
and Michael couldn't move an inch from Kamaro. And Kamal told me, I wasn't really cool with Kamal at the time. He was like, bro, Khabib is worse. And I said, <laughs> worse. And when that fight happened, and I'll never forget it, like a, so, so many people blow up the he tagged Khabib. It's like go watch the go watch the clip. He didn't tag him. Like he okay, let me try to get, get you after that. And once he went to the ground, I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. And that's when I truly saw who Habib was when he was talking to Dana. And he was telling Mike to stop, stop it, like, like, give up, please give up. You know I deserve this. And I was just like, this dude's an animal. But that's all I had knew about him. And then um, you know, the rest is history. But when I met, when I met Habib that fight week, you know, I had met him in Boston briefly for like a day, and then I I met him in fight week. Uh it, I saw Hob and I was like, man, he coached Luke Rocco, DC, and Kane Velasquez. That's he, it. Is that the only time it ever happened at that point? Um, it's yeah, never. I, I, I think at that time it was, yeah. yeah. Maybe, you know, with Amanda having two titles, Nunez and eight Americans, but it's never been like simultaneously three fighters, right, with the belt, right? No, it, 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 uh, that, yeah, it's the only only time really. Um, the the one closest to that was Militich, but but uh, they were they did pretty good too. Uh, yeah. Then uh, when everybody forgets on me, they forget Frank Shamrock. Yeah, that's yeah, true. They forget Frank Shamrock. You, yeah. had, you even had Phil Baroni in the AKA days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil. We had people, so many. People, we have so many people here. It's like ridiculous. So so Lynn, when I first started, Anatomy of a Fighter was supposed to be about doing because think about the name anatomy of a fighter it was right it was pretense for me so i wanted to do like one of my first things i ever did was on phil baroni that never got released i had reached out to like chuck liddell and talked to his wife and i wanted to do like randy couture i just wanted to do all old fighters because to me i was and because you know i was cool with rashad evans he was like a brother i was like they're forgotten no one's talking about them rampage just did a thing with ariel hawani and he was like, man, I, you know, my, I got a bad taste in my mouth off the last fight because, honestly, the UFC don't even bring me up. Like, I didn't even exist. And that's true about this sport. He like, you don't see the rampage slams and the pride days and they own pride and the highlights. You don't see none of that. So rampage is like, I'm almost like I didn't ever, never fought before. And I was like, one thing that can never disappear is film. You make a film on somebody, it's always there. And that's why I was like, I want to spend time with these. I don't want to say has been, but that's what it is to the, the public, right? Has been, the has been's. And that's what a Natty Mail Fighter was supposed to be. A year, I was going to spend a year going around the country, reconnecting with older fighters and talking about the old days and how they got into fighters. And then it just, it's weird how it happened, but that was the number one goal was like, to re relive and I knew about AKA because Phil Baroni used to tell me that the days of how hard he was living up in San Jose and all this other crazy stuff. So it's um yeah it's it's crazy how it worked out. But I, I feel like we, me, Hav, Brian, Carlos, Habib, all the rest of the crew, Ali, we all met for a reason. Like think about how we all mesh together. We're like a family. Like you know, yeah. it's like you don't see your family all the time. But once you see them, it's just it fits. Yes, it it's fits. Perfect, you know? yeah. Well, it's a good thing for you too that uh, you know it didn't go with with all the old guys for you because unfortunately, in like all sports, you know, um, there's no interest, man. There's no. no interest. They're just it's sad. And, and it's gonna be a repeated cycle over and over again. There's gonna be no interest because you, you got to look at okay, like I say, Frank Shamrock. And I guarantee you, a lot of people that are viewing this are gonna go, "Who's Fred Shamrock?" I don't know who he is, you know. <laughs> and straight true. up, straight up, even if I say Chuck Liddell, oh, I think I heard of him, you know, but he might yeah, be. Yeah, I don't know who's that guy? Yeah, and that, that's gonna listen. I'm glad Luke is back in the news, but this is such a blazing sport. Like all these accomplishments Luke had, you get out of the picture long enough, they start to forget about who Luke Rocco is. Uh, and and uh, correct, yeah, he's he's still in the in the light a little bit, but but he's not where he was before. And I mean, 
it's with the new generation. It's all about the Hamzad. It's it's about uh, Sean O'Malley. Yeah, it's, it's it's about all these new guys coming up. You know, Cyril Gone and and things like that. If you're not in the new, in the present, you're yeah. forgotten. You know, yeah. and I, and you know, Will, as you can attest, so can Lynn. It's you just you look at the Instagram of these guys, all these great fighters, and you're thinking, oh yeah, you know, this is what you know. In our era, he was one of the greatest. So you're thinking, oh, this guy's gonna have all this many. Followers, then you look, you go, huh? Shit, I, you don't even have close to what I have or close to anybody that's even known, you know? You're like, wow. And it's that's how quick the sport eats you up. And and I'm not just talking about MMA. I'm talking about sports in general. Sports in general. Sports in general. Yeah. Right. Well, I can tell you, Will, I used to film Chuck. I was there when I had that Habib moment that you had with Chuck in his prime because his buddy would bring him around. And they went to college together. But this was before YouTube was big. So no, you get 12,000 views. Woohoo! Look at me. I'm yeah. somebody now. Now, you know, a kid run a stick figure gets a million views. So, yeah. you know, it's all relevant, right? But you're right. How do they stick out? Like Frank Shamrock, I remember that fight vividly, but I'm, I've been there since the beginning. We yeah. look at, some, we, did, we said, when did you start watching? The average channel viewer on this channel is about three years ago. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So, yeah. Listen, I, I, Anatomy of Fighting was created August 14th, 2017, four years ago. Right. So all this stuff I've accomplished is in only four years. It went fast, too, how I'm at, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just like, like it went fast because August, that January, I met Khabib a few months, April, that was fight, with, and then it all went crazy, right? And it's like, yeah. you, I've been on this journey. Like I said, I... The only thing that I regret truly, and I have a note about this, is I just wasn't there for the last fight. And, it, you know, it was a lot of things, but <laughs> I'm just going to laugh about it. I wish I could have been there for the yeah, last fight. Yeah, we, know? Know we know how snakes breed and what they do, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, so it's, like, it is what it is. But uh, that's, I'm like, like I'll, I will always say, like, I told Ali this the other day. I said, bro. If I never ever filmed Habib again, bro, I was that we created history. Yeah, like the story. I was part of. I don't have to be the whole story, right? A central focal point of the story. You see what I'm saying? Um, you were there documenting the history. Yeah, that's what you were I, doing. That that's you, know, you were I, there. Yeah, before that belt ever went across his waist, I was able to see him before that. And after that, I was able to be in Seal D in the mountains with him and Abdul Manap. And Habib tells me, you know, things that I don't know if he want me to tell the world yet, because I feel like, you know, he got a film that they making on his life. And it's a lot of footage Hob, that no one's ever seen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That, you're, still, you're still working on that, right? It's for Netflix. Yeah, that's going to be like for a minute. You know, like, <clears throat> like an hour long interview with Habib's father, sit down interview, like yeah. questions. He's speaking in Russian, like in 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 Avrar language, and you know, like that I couldn't even translate, so I never touched it. Yeah. So it, you know, I always tell people like when I went over to Dagestan, Habib came to me that first day. He said, brother, let's just do small episodes and save the rest for the future. So when you really look at those episodes of the Dagestan Chronicles, they like less than, some are less than eight minutes, nine minutes. And then at the end, when I got back to America, I made the longer ones that's, you know, the ones that's like 12 million, 13 million views. But we saved a lot, man. It's a lot there that uh, hopefully the world see one day, you know, because that's up to, uh, Habib, that's up to actually the, the producers and the directors on which direction they really want to go for his film, you know? I have a question. Where was the coolest place you hung out with Javier with? You say Dubai or up in the oh, mountains? That's Dubai. That's Dubai. That whole... <laughs> yeah. Yo, that room service at the... What was it called? The Maidan? The Maidan. Yeah. 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 That was a fun trip, man. That was a fun trip yeah. because... Um, that was before the pandemic. It was like one of the first, last things we done, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That and was kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Then don't forget Uzbekistan. That was amazing. That was, a, Uz that was Uz amazing. Uzbekistan is the best food hospitality on earth. 
They're um, unbelievable with food. That with food. Lava, oh. Listen, when you think of, when I think <laughs> about some of my best moments with y'all guys, that experience in Uzbekistan, because I call it's a film called 48 Hours in Tashkent. I got called literally 48 hours before the event. Hey, can you get on a plane with Frank Mir and come to Uzbekistan? Sure, right? Everybody's going to be there. Hab, Abdul Manav, Habib, the rest of the crew. It's Umar fighting. The reason why it's so special to me is because we locked in history before Umar got to the UFC. Yep. I interviewed Hob after that fight, and you like, I don't know what's next. I think he's ready for the UFC. That film got millions of views on online, and that was the last moment before I do. I, that was the last time I saw I do him in that. Yeah, and that's yeah. why to me, when you think about obviously going to Dagestan is special, but other like forget the fight weeks. That was full access, ringside, able to go to the locker room. I'm everywhere, like. I will never ever get that type of access in the UFC. You know that, Hoff. That's yeah, of course they, they don't give nobody that type of access. Yeah, like I can't. You can't even leave the locker room. Yeah, yeah, you can't even leave the locker room. If it's so, not for them, they're not. Like even, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Will, because yeah. they, they limit you what you can do, what you you know. I mean, the bottom line is uh, the UFC is not too accessible when you're filming. They're 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 the fighters that they want for themselves or the fighters that belong to their organization. They're, they're not, they're not very accessible. No, they don't, they don't really want you back there. Some of the major fighters, they can have that. Like Habib has had that, but, well, they have no but you were limited, but you were they limited. Have no choice, you yeah. they have no choice. But yeah. you were limited. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> you, you didn't get free reign. You get limited. Uh, other organizations give you more freedom, but even they yeah. have, they have their, their rules too. But, but, you're more more limited with the UFC. They have Rob, I went over to one championship in April for the first TNT. They probably gave you a whole bunch of freeway, right? Bro, it was the crazy. It was it was sort of like Uzbekistan. Do whatever you want. He has a badge on. I'm like, I'm. I can be in the ring. I could get inside the cage if I wanted to. I could follow these guys to the medical room. It was crazy. So I'm like, that is storytelling for me because I get to tell a complete story, but. Like when, you know, some of the famous videos when Hob talking to Habib after the Connor fight and he apologizing to him, that's like I had to cut that because I wasn't able to leave the locker room, right? You just, yeah. I just got to wait. Yeah. And then you got to be, it's tricky because if I say, you know what, I didn't get to leave the locker room, but damn, I want to use footage of the fight or something to connect the transition. Yeah. And if you do, they're going to just rip that shit off and give you a copy yeah, right? yeah. So it's like you yeah. got to get creative with how you even tell a story. It's tough. You know, it's tough because uh, when we did the Bellator event and they had uh, people filming Habib for, for a documentary, uh, they were very limited too. They were allowed to do certain things, but they were limited to how many camera uh, people could be back there. So, you know, like, and you're talking about 1FC. That's fantastic that they allow you to do that because you could tell the whole story it helps them and, and this and that. But on this one here, I, I'm giving another example of the, the Bellator event where they were limiting. So you didn't have that kind of freedom, but you still had a little bit of freedom. Whereas in the UFC, more in the UFC? yeah, yeah. The, the Bellator had more and you had the utmost best respect with the one. And, and of course, you know, in Uzbekistan, you, you had the best, best, best place there for you to, to yeah, go. Yeah. It, 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 it is, I would say one, it, Uzbekistan was the, by far the best GFC before it was EFC, right? Um, PFL, Ray Seppo gave me do whatever you want to do, right? And um, and then one championship. But like I said, it, it, that's different versions of storytelling. You got to still be able to tell the story regardless of your limitation. It's sort yeah. of like it's sort of like if you had one camera, Lynn. And yeah, Lynn, I know this one, and that's it, <laughs> right? You, oh man, if I had better equipment, I'd be able, no, you got to figure it out. You got to be able to tell a story with limited use of equipment or limited access. And that's the biggest thing. If I go in the gym and Hob is like, Will, you can film anything you want, but they about, they far in the day in the cage. I don't want no, you know, I, I just don't want nobody, you know, maybe behind the scenes, Hob tell me the reason, you know, somebody may have an injury, right? Right. And, uh, Hob is like, nah, Will, I don't want you to film. I still got to be able to tell the story out of that, though. Like, 
that's where true storytelling comes. Yeah, I agree. You have to be able to tell a story. And that's the reason why I'm so <sighs> obsessed with putting narration in my my stories now. Yeah. It's like, and and we get limited to, to, to what we show because sometimes, like Will, like you said, you know, I have a fighter that maybe has a particular injury and, and he has this very important fight. And if I allow you to film completely someone, some good coach, which there's a lot of them out there, they'll look, they go, huh, look, he's weak here. And then, uh, you know, I mean, we do a lot of filming over here, but one thing I don't allow is to have uh, people that film uh, put the fights uh, sparring out there. I don't like live sparring. I don't yeah, like yeah. live sparring. Because we, y'all, was, y'all kept that under wraps in Dubai with Khabib. Yeah. That didn't, that was squeaky quiet with yeah. y'all. Yeah, yeah, we were really good about that, and and uh, Len knows of Dubai because he was, you know, it was him and, and uh, Kamal, right? Kamal, were the, you were yeah, the two yeah. there, yeah. So I you, couldn't and, put any of my stuff out at all, buddy. It's just the yeah. podcast I did with Av because yeah. of a lot of stuff. But it's but the point is, it got filmed, and I tried to do respectively as close as I could. I know that you go to another level, you know, and I see what you do, and I have no ego about it. You take it to the next level, all the coloring, all the detail and the camera that you're using. And I didn't want to invest in that yet. This was more of a hobby, but I could make yeah. television, but you wanted to make cinema, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I think that's, that's the differential. True. That's true. And yeah, so yeah, I've been true. I've been filming for YouTube. You were filming as though it was already going to Netflix. There you go. And I think I, I think that's the analogy, right? It's better than that, okay? And when you people know? ask me what's the difference, and I'm like, there you go, right there. There it is, right there. That's yeah. who you are. That's who you are. That's where your goal is. That's where you're going to. And yeah. When people see that, they can look and go, hey, you know, I remember Will was talking about this. And now look where he's at. It, it, yeah, it, that was perfect, man, how you said it. Because you got amazing guys that's out here shooting vlog-style content. But I literally do. I am filming for those guys that potentially might see it to hire me one day. And that's, that's the thing. And the beautiful thing about it is I work for myself my own brand so everything is trial by error it's stuff that i see in everything i do like oh i didn't do this <laughs> i didn't do that right but i i have the ability to do that because it's not like no one has a battery in my back and paying me anything to be like we want you to do it this certain way right so that's hollywood that's what i was going to bring up earlier it's like hollywood will get you in meetings and have lawyers and people rewriting your script and you won't get nothing done and that's the yeah. beautiful thing about the independent producer there is one producer I want to talk about, though. This guy has helped me make so much more video, Javier. His little videos kill it because he's like, stop filming the sparring. It's the dialogue. And I'm like, no, the sparring looks so cool. Like a little kid watching a Kung Fu movie. He's like, that's not what it's about, bro. I put up sparring once. I got nothing. I, and, I, and then I go back. I go, OK, you're right. I go, he doesn't have a video camera. What does he know? Oh, my gosh. I will never doubt this guy again. So Javier's no. videos. Your videos, you're you're one of the top video guy producers too. Just your Instagram, <laughs> it could have been a different camera. Yeah, what made you start that though? I remember you told me like people just kept bugging you about you should start your own channel, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what you know? So I don't know. It, it just leads to one thing to another. I, I catch something funny, you know, and you know, then I then I create little funny scenarios, and it just happens, you know. But but I felt that uh, you know that's what people would want to see. They don't want to see the you know. I mean, look, if you, who wants to watch sparring, really, realistically? Who wants to watch sparring? And unless you hurt somebody, but no one really wants to watch yeah, it. In all, the, in all the years that you've been a fan of boxing, how many times do you really want to watch them spar spar? Not really. Not, not really. really. Unless it's a real fight. You know, yeah. I mean, about the only person I can think that you might want to watch because he was ferocious with his sparring partners was Mike Tyson. You know, yeah. he might be the only one because he's ripping people's heads off, you know? So, but even so much of that, you would only want to watch, you know? So I, I told Lynn, I go, Lynn, what do you, you guys are building all these fancy cameras for surround around this, around that. And I'm going, people just want to see, read into what these guys' life's all about. They want to follow a, a, what their narrative is. What is this yeah. guy doing? And things of that nature, they, you know, they, they don't, they love the interaction. I mean, I, that's what I get from everybody. They love the interaction. They still want me to continue doing it, you know, and, I actually, sometimes I get lazy and I, don't, I just don't want to do it. The one thing that I feel like from a, a creative standpoint that I always said I, that was missing from AKA was their downtime. Like, because you know what they like to do on the weekend when they're not training. They like to go into the city, to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, you see no, the pictures. 
and took a camera with like these guys. I see their stories and I'm like, yo, they riding trolleys. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking like, yo. Like, I see. On. I see that, too. I just like figured they want some downtime. Get the camera out of That's my face. That's what I felt. That's what I figured. That's what, That's I, figured. what I felt. They just, you know, yeah, this is, they, they want none of that. They just want now, you know, them. you know, at the, at the last couple of years, Habib is tired of these cameras, man. You know, he takes he, he, yeah, he'll look at me he, he and, and he'll just say, Coach, do I have to film? And, yeah. and normally when he says that, I just go, No. <laughs> and he goes, okay, when he take that no, deep no. breath, when he take that deep breath, yeah. uh, he's like, You know, he just want to get it over with. Yeah, he wants to get it over with. Yeah. I mean, he's involved so much. I mean, obviously, you know, you know, Will, what it's like in Dagestan with him. And, and can you imagine what it's like now? I mean, I remember. Two and a half years ago, the last time I was in Dagestan, and, and uh, he couldn't go anywhere, bro. He had whenever he had to meet me, it was always like he was, you know, kind of with the hat and the whole bed, and, yeah. and it, even myself, <laughs> I had to do the same thing. Just not not have to do it, but to some degree, you know, it was like, dang, if I don't want to be recognized, I better do that because everybody recognized me wherever I went. Did, did they crazy. have you stay? Did they have you stay above that store? Uh no, I was at uh the store. It was a I was staying at a hotel. Okay, right, they right, right me, by the beach, right yeah, by the beach. Me, yeah, they see they treated you nice. They put me in the hood. In the hood. <laughs> be, well, well, I want to ask you. Look, look. The first day I went to Daggy Stand, it was probably three in the morning. I get there, they pick me up. First of all, I'm in an airport for two hours because we can't communicate, and, and then I literally just pull out my phone. And show a video of Habib, and they like Habib. I'm like, yeah, he outside, outside, outside. And then finally, somebody came from outside to get me. But we we get to where I'm staying, and, and Habib is like, brother, don't leave this house at night, brother. Trust me. Like, keep the door locked. He laughing. He laughing like keep the door locked. So me being me, I'm like, man, what are you talking about? So this is a true story. So he gave me a key. He says, brother, don't lose this key. I go outside at like four in the morning because I take the tripod out. I want it to film like it being night and this ambient sound. And I want to get the establishing shot of where I'm at. I go to like I lock the door when I went back inside because I was probably outside for like two minutes. There wasn't nobody out there. The key just broke inside the... Uh, <laughs> Yo, so I made it up. I lied. And I was like, yo, bro, the key just broke. And uh, I tell Habib on WhatsApp, and he's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So somebody comes over. You always got somebody doing something. Somebody come over with a brand new key. I was, just like, I was like, what? But it was funny when he said that because he tried to spook me. Like, brother, if you go outside, brother, you might get smashed. I, 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 I was kind of I was kind of laughing when you said that because I'm going, oh, man, I, I was around kind of almost all of Dagestan. It, it seemed very very safe everywhere. And I'm I like, know, oh. and that's what he, that's what I'm saying. He was trying to spook me, and it's it's late at night. He it was during the Olympics or yeah. the World Cup when yeah. I went, and he he went to Moscow. So for two days, I was in Dagestan with just some of the guys, right? So we went to cafes and they tried to take me to little spots where it was people that I could see. And like, I was like, where's Habib talking about, bro? Like these people coming up to me like I was like a god or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, everywhere I went was safe, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't look at anywhere in, in uh, you know, the, the, the Mahachkala, right? I didn't look anywhere yeah. there I went was safe, anywhere. And there was nobody. I didn't see one person uh, that was homeless. I didn't see anybody no, begging. You don't see none of, that. none of that. Zero. You know, no graffiti, no nothing. It was like, uh, I go, damn. It's it's basically it's it's a nice big city. The only thing, and well, you can agree with me on this. They drive horrible. They're the oh, worst. Like Lynn, They're the Lynn, worst. Lynn, Lynn. I literally <laughs> prayed. <laughs> probably five times that, that I was going to die. Wow. Because some of them drivers, man, listen, man. I, I had a quick question. Was, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt you one second. Go ahead. I've been holding my piece here because I was like going to say something that relates to both of you, but you see how big of a – I see in the videos how people swarm coach over there. Yeah. 
like like bigger than fighters get swarmed over here because they respect the coach. How was it seeing that? Because he's like, he comes back to San Jose. He's like, I'm in the diner. No one's going to bug me. But yeah. It's like, how was that? Can you explain to me what that was like? Well, it was no, I went doing Ramadan. So okay. it's a lot of space and respect. And really, he trained and he went home and then he they come get me again and it's time to go eat. And man, they stuffed me. I got a picture from a room in Dagestan where I was so bo- And Hob, you know how it was in Dubai. Because we was always talking about keto. We broke out yeah. of keto. And like, oh, <laughs> yeah, like, keto I, got I, off I, the I door. From Dagestan where I'm like bloated to I'm like eight yeah. months pregnant. Because it's so much food. So this is how, this is what I'm saying. This is how thoughtful he is. So when I went to Dagestan, I observed the fast. And I think that's where me and K- Khabib bonded. I didn't eat or drink or do nothing. But the first full day I was there after I interviewed Abdul Manap, Habib, so I told you how below us was a store, like I think like an uncle store or somebody like that. It was like a store. Habib goes down there. He comes up. Brother, you don't have to fast. After I did it one day, he came up with <laughs> three pounds of Snickers. And, <laughs> and he's like, brother, just eat this. Eat this, brother. You don't, don't worry about it. I'm like, no, nah, bro, I'm not eating that. So I, I think, thought it was coach's room. I think like six days in, six days in, I was there. I broke the fast, man. I was like up editing because I was editing in real time like I always do. I was like, the next day we're going to release next something. Day, yeah. I'm like, just hot. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And the fastest internet I ever experienced in my life was in Russia. And that really? Guy, the, listen, I will upload a six gig file and it will be done in five minutes. Man, I would love to have that. Man, I was like, what is up with this internet? It was the craziest thing ever. It must have been take, like. Did they take you to Hollywood? Like that restaurant called Hollywood Hive? I don't remember, bro. I went to Maddox. We'll talk, like we'll talk about that off camera. I, I got I got hosted almost everywhere. One guy would take me one place, the other guy would take me the next place. Oh my gosh. Uh, I had a good time with Islam when he when he took me to uh, a barbecue, outdoor barbecue, and the kids would be out wrestling and they'd be out riding those horses and. Yeah, I, I, mean, I remember that footage. That was amazing with Islam. Yeah, they, and, the yeah and they cook on the ground, and and uh, it was pretty pretty amazing. And uh, the the thing that cracked me up was about the horses. They're telling me, Coach, you want to ride this horse? I go, Ah, oh, no, I don't want to ride the horse. They go, Oh no, he's okay. He only kicked this one guy last week because he he was stupid. He got behind the horse, and I'm like, Okay, <laughs> now you're telling me to ride this yeah. horse that the horse is normally safe, <laughs> but last week he just kicked this person. Now you want me to ride him? I go, no, no, thank you. No, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm yeah, like, it was expensive. Yeah, so that, we we was eating so much uh food there. When we went into the mountains to CLD and we was because it's a nice drive back to my my hot chill out, right? I, I caught the runs. Ah! <laughs> the funniest experience ever. I'm telling them, please pull over because it's like little rest, restrooms on the side of the road that you can pull in. Yeah. And Habib is like, no, brother, hold it. And he's laughing and filming me. I don't know if he still got this footage, but I'm in the back seat like he's paying. And they just got, they on the seat, like laughing at me, like, brother, he's about to shit his pants. <laughs> Yo, so then when we get back to my place, I run upstairs. I don't even, I leave my camera in the, the car because I got to get upstairs. It was so bad. And uh, they chased me upstairs and was still filming me. I, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was crazy. Man. It was crazy experiences that I, I always tell people, like, what I took, that changed my life. My perspective of the world changed when I saw that, when I went over there. I was going to ask, how, why is it so hard now that Will and I have a thing in common? Why is it hard to stay on keto with you in Dubai? Well, Dubai is, isn't too, too hard. Uzbekistan is impossible. Yeah, that was... impossible. You cannot because if you're going down there, and they're hosting you. Oh, no way, no, no, no. It's, it's yeah, it's just impossible. yeah. You can't say no. You can't do it. You can't. And this is what happened. We were at Adebek's, uh, uh house or his oh, uh, his guest, like where he has people come in. Yeah, he has a guy that was the principal of uh, one of the prominent colleges, the principal. 
and he's hosting us like with the food. And the guy's literally chasing guys down to try the food. These guys are running from him. I'm not joking. They were running. <laughs> and he's like chasing them down. No, no, you have to try the food. And they're like, no, no. They're running and they're hiding. I kid you not. They're hiding. And, and this guy's getting everybody. Me, I already knew. I got I I got really good at it. Just take a bite and that's it. Oh, thank you. That's it. Yeah, that's you're it. You're pretend fine. pretend eat. No, you can just bite. Smartest, just a bite. Just take the one bite. Smartest thing to do bite. would be to to diet before you go, like fast or whatever before cut you cut weight. Go. Cut weight before you go on the trip. Drop ten because you're gonna just put it back on. Well, <laughs> if you're smart and and you just take a bite, just one bite, you'll be fine. But it's the problem so is, good. yes, that's the problem. Come on, like that's fly over in Uzbekistan at rice with all that. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then all the pastries. That they have with the cakes. Oh, it's, it's, it's so good. It's hard to just eat one bite, but if you can do that, you'll be fine. I think the trick to there in Europe is, oh, this is made with really organic stuff, but then you I'm organically you eat. Feel full. Right, right. Organic is the trick, right? Oh yeah, diet Pepsi, whatever. It's diet ice cream, Hav. That's what it is. But um, I gotta say. We got some fan questions. We'll go into that. And I know there's more. We probably can do another one again. There's stories. You know, I told Carlos. Yeah, he's like, he's interested. Brian, everybody. You're sharing a bigger story now. You guys were there with Hav. You get to see stuff. But what was one of your favorite times hanging out with Hav? I'll just close on that before we go to fan questions. Man. You know, one thing I, I wish I would have did with y'all, Hob, it was in uh, Dubai when y'all went to the mall and uh, Carlos got his gangster car back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you that was the funniest. You would have loved that. I, I, think, I, I, I was like, I think the funnest time, honestly, it, it had to be them legendary fight weeks because you got to understand, I don't film, I don't film, I, I don't film with like a, like a, I include everybody in my storytelling. So if you watch my series, it's, I'm interviewing everybody, everybody talking. So it's not like if you went back and watched uh, uh, the Conor McGregor week, it was just me and Habib. I'm like interviewing Hob every day. It's like those memories you're never going to lose. Like those, those are embedded in stone. And tens of millions of people around the world have seen that. So we was a part of history, so I can't be like, oh, something random. Like, we was a part of his history together, him coaching, and I'm documenting. You see what I'm saying? So those fight weeks, it ain't like I, I showed up the day before the fight. I was there the whole week. So it's just those times together. Because think about it. Between a Khabib, a Conor McGregor, a, a, of that magnitude, because I'll throw John in there, but that's just his greatness. Uh, in D.C. and all these guys. But it's star power. When was the last time it was a star like a Habib or a Conor McGregor in the sport? Like with numbers and pay-per-view? It, it might have not. I talked to somebody the other day about this. might have not been one. No. So, nope. no. go ahead. Go ahead, Hav. Well, with, with Habib, uh, the, the Abu Dhabi shows were, were no. Uh, they were mostly, like from what I – heard on the last one that it got like a hundred million 100 million views not on pay-per-view but viewership viewers viewers worldwide 100 million so I, what, I think about that a hundred yeah. million people tuned in wow that's so crazy. what i'm saying is it's one third of the united states almost yeah 350 yes. million that's to give you an idea so my thing is honestly i always joke and be like i was Howard Cosell to Habib's Muhammad Ali, right? Yeah. How, how, Howard Cosell gave Muhammad Ali a platform that really expanded who Ali was. You knew Ali from some interviews, but when he was able to sit down with Howard Cosell and really talk about things in the community, you really saw who Muhammad Ali was and they meshed. And it was these polar opposites. This white yeah. guy during the 60s and then this black guy that's a uh, nation of Islam, Muslim, they pray five times a day and he talk about it constantly. And that's the same thing. I'm this guy from the ghetto in America and I'm with this devout Muslim from Dagestan, you know, that is a fighter. Like it's like polar opposites in world. And I feel like, 
I'm safe. I'm safe to say if we might not never see another fighter that pull <clears> for 10, 10, 20 years in this sport because the sport is changing in front of our face. It's about Instagram fathers, followers, like he Hob said, social media clout, and these fighters want to hang out with rappers and get tattoos and look cool and all this other stuff. And you got guys complaining about pay and they're not getting paid enough. And I'm like, man, the micro is the microcosm of the sport is changing and we might not see somebody with that type of principle ever again. And true. That's the thing. What I'm saying It's like, that was rare. So when you say what, what was my favorite time with Hob? It's all of it. You know, I can't change any, any of it. Like I said, they're going to make a documentary on this guy's life and they're going to have to use all my footage to make it. You see what I'm this saying? Ain't, this, this ain't a question, bro, but this is from Artie Ramadi. I'm sorry, sir, but I just saw you in my phone. Will Harris looked like Denzel in the Equalizer, Equalizer. movie. <laughs> hey, why are you, what are you doing behind the camera? That's all I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got, you got to understand, I don't really do a lot of interviews or... Um, right. Or like the, I don't even post myself on my own Instagram page. I just it's not the nature people. of the camera guy. It's not the no, nature. No, it's not, I, I don't care for that, you know, so. Appreciate Let's it. see. What was this one? How was it being with Habib and Dagestan? Are the people different from there, from Kuwait, um, from Kuwait City? I guess uh, he's like. He's from Kuwait. He's from Kuwait. This guy's from Kuwait. He's asking, like, what was that like? Can you answer that, Hoff. I don't know. I've never been to Kuwait. No, 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 no. no. What was it like being he's with from, Habib and Dagestan? He's from Kuwait. You guys both answer. Take your turn. Oh, he's from Kuwait. Oh, um, it was pretty. It was like family everywhere I went. Uh, people, people would, you know, his relatives would come up and give me a big giant hug and just uh, really uh, be appreciative of what I've done for Habib. And they all felt connected, you know. And so obviously, when people come up to you and you can feel the sincerity and and the in their actions. It makes you feel good because you know you feel like wow, you know they they, they really they really care about you. It, it, so that's the, what I felt there was like real. It was it wasn't this oh how you doing your celebrity. No, they 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 came up to me because they felt connected to me because of what I did for Habib. You know, and uh, everywhere I went, everywhere it was like that. Everywhere there wasn't one place I went to that wasn't that way. So so I felt good everywhere in Dagestan. And that was one of the major reasons because they felt connected to me. Therefore, I felt really, uh, you know, warm and welcome. You know, that's uh, that's the thing. How, how was your feeling over there? What was your like in a nutshell for you? Like, what was that like? Well, well, I was over there doing that, uh, Ramadan. So I was over there when Ramadan ended too. So people were coming out and about. But you know, like the kid that just won the Olympics, Ahab, the kid from uh, Dagestan that just won the Olympics. I yeah. remember him when I was over there. And Habib was telling me, like, brother, these guys are freestyle world champions and Olympics and, like, telling me all of these great athletes. And now, now that I look back years later, I'm like, damn, I remember him. You know what's crazy? This is how crazy it is. I posted a picture on my Instagram not too long ago where I, I was – did you remember that picture, Hob, when I was in the gym, the basketball gym with Usman? And I didn't know that was Usman. So now <laughs> you just see these guys because, you know, they all playing basketball. And I'm yeah, just, yeah. I take a picture with these and it's like, damn, who all did I meet in that? said, I got to go through all this footage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I'm like interviewing all these people and not knowing what they're saying, but I'm just interviewing them. And I had a translator with me. Habib had a translator with me. So I just go around and just ask questions. And it's like, I don't know, man. Like Habib said something cheeky where he was like brother you famous as me in dagestan right now because everywhere we went it was just you know this. so how, so when we was in the village you know it's ramadan and then also the women just stay out of the way because of respect right always there yeah. and stuff like that but it was funny uh, one time like in my dagestan chronicles you see these kids doing push-ups it was like a lot of push-ups and it was women in in the thing in habib they was like around the corner like this, huh? Like with their cell phones. Yeah, I mean, because he like, because he like, brother, they never seen black person before. <laughs> it was an amazing experience, man. It, it's too much, bro. It, honestly, it's just too much. This is an interesting question. I wouldn't have thought of it. 
Did you see the notorious Hollywood movie? What did you think about it? I guess production value, storytelling. For what did you think? For yeah. yeah. Uh, when I first saw it, I liked it. Um, I feel like it was, It started out, see, I'm such a film historian. It starts out with Connor in his attic, right? Uh, it, it starts out with him and D. Devlin in the attic. And they talk about how broke they are. They got an eviction notice. They got it. They living in a, his mom attic, and that was the Connor before Connor blew up, right? So then the next scene after we leave the house, he goes to his gym that was poor quality. He talk about how they sharing gloves, uh, gym equipment because they can't afford, but we still getting it in. Then he get to the UFC. They like went from the humble beginnings a little bit straight to him winning that first fight and getting the bonus and then it was all commercial hollywood commercialized that's all it was it was it so the story the story started losing its depth well it's immediately within 10 minutes it's, it's got it too much shine too much floss towards the end right yeah yeah so I, it, it was one of those things where you could tell that that footage was by somebody that was over in ireland and then they just bought that footage to use for the commercial because they use all ufc footage but in terms of to be honest, in terms of doc style, from everybody I talked to in a, in a, the Hollywood circles, they said the film was shitty. Yeah, because they didn't dive deep into. They just commercialized who kind of was and made them this super. And I get it, right? That's how you build the brand, huh? Right? You just commercialize them, make them look like a star. But uh, they they never got. You, they didn't interview his father, his mother, like you know what I'm saying. It's stuff that I look at, like, damn, how y'all didn't do that? So it's, detail. Uh, yeah, they, they went from handmade to mass production. And that's yeah, the best that's way of looking at it, it was, right? It just commercialized. I think Countdown would have did better. Like you know what I'm saying. I would have think the USC Countdown crew would have did better. You know? This is a quick one from Drew W. Mr. Harris, what misconception? Uh, what misconception did you have about Dagestan before actually going there? I already submitted to your great content. Keep them coming. I enjoyed the close-up moments with fighters. Just what you're talking about, the details. I won't, I won't say it was misconceptions. All I would say was I had idiots that's higher up, like, oh, are you going to Dagestan? Be careful, bro. Like, trying to scare me. Like, it was some like this crazy war-torn, like, you know, like it was like this terroristic area of the country. And I've literally had people say, yo, bro, be safe. And I was just like, I was walking the streets of Dagestan by myself filming for 40 minutes while the guys were over there getting coffee. So for me, it was like just these, if you Google Dagestan and, 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 and Islam and you will see some stupid articles, some stupid articles that's been made. But uh, I think when I went over there and Habib gave me the freedom to just see the whole city and the country lands and stuff like that in the mountains, I just realized, like I, un, like I said on Joe Rogan, my experience over there in 2019 when I went on Joe Rogan, I said he would never, ever lose. And Joe Rogan was like, why? And I explained it. And I was like, man, it's wh where he from. Like, they make it's different over there. I've seen it with my own eyes. I can't explain it. I said that to Joe Rogan. He will never, ever lose. And he did it. You see what I'm saying? And, it, and it, it was one of those things where I just felt like, like how I've said it, I don't need to say it. It's the people were amazing. They were hospitable. You know, they were respectful. But that's the Islamic culture. That's Muslims in general. That's just how they are. And people don't understand that. I'm like, you might be, you follow a different religion, but it, you see the teachings of Islam and not just look at the crazy stuff you see. You see, man. This is the way I need to live as a person, period. Like, you know, so it was, it was it was beautiful over there. And and really, I didn't like I said, I didn't have any misconceptions. I just didn't know nothing about it. I, I want to ask I, I, I want to ask Kav the same thing of what did you think before you went over? Did you have any thoughts like what it's going to be like? Or you're like, I'm with Habib, no big deal. Or what was it like? Uh, well, I, uh, you know, Habib tells me, coach, coach, you know, you, you know, you're very famous. In, in my country now and i go what no i'm not he goes no no you're very famous and then i have a people from tajikistan you know some of my fighters coach you come to tajikistan you're gonna get a lot of people coming to you I go, what are you talking about because you're very famous so i kept hearing this you're very famous over there and i'm thinking they're just talking right and when i get there i go to the airport 
and I, and I go to get my baggage, right, my luggage, and they're singing, they're dancing, they're singing, and, and I go, what are they doing that for? It was for me. You know, I was like, that was my experience, you know. They, they come out, they greet you, and they give you uh, the robes they put on you and whatnot, and it was... Uh, I was like from the very beginning. I was like, I was like in shock. You know, I didn't. I was not used to that kind of treatment. No way. You know, everywhere I went, there was it was that way. It's just people would come up everywhere. Politicians would come up to you. Police officers would come up to you. For and they'd say photo, photo. And I, I was thinking photo. Okay, some of these speak English, but they don't speak a lick of English. Photo is the same in Russian. It's the same. Photo is a photo. So they come up and photo, photo. And then uh, I'd have guys coming out of restaurants. They own the restaurants and ask me to come back and eat there for on them free, you know. And and I had so much of that; it was crazy. I went into a soup uh, market, supermarket, right, shopping. And next thing you know, I'm walking out of the supermarket, and guess what? There I am on their one, their Instagram. I saw it, it popped up, and there I am. They said even Javier Mendez shops here. Yeah, I was crazy. like, what? <laughs> Javier Mendez buys jeans. Buy your yeah, jeans here. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't get paid for this. Yeah, no, it's like it's crazy. I mean, everywhere I went, and they uh, they gave me so many gifts. I went to a soup place. I, everywhere I went, they they hosted me. So when they host you over there, they give you presents. Yeah. They entertain you, and and I was hosted everywhere. Oh, you want to see my gift? Yeah. Someone did ask if that was Muhammad Ali. It looks like Muhammad Ali behind yeah. you. This is this, this is my this is this was my personal gift from Habib. He 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 gave me this when I was in Dagestan right here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is yeah, from yeah. Habib himself. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Don't run in my That's house. Nice. I said, man. That's nice. They took me into a knife place and perfume place, and they want yeah. me to pick out. And bro, I was afraid of customs, so I was like, I'm not taking none of this stuff. So he said, "That's what I said." He gave me some piece of paper, said, "Brother, you'll get through customs with this." Yeah, they gave me one. I, I got, I got a knife me, like that. Yeah. I said, what, "What is this, bro? I'm trying to kill a little elf off of the Lord of the Rings." That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, "But this is the Dagestan daggers, though. These are the Dagestan yeah. daggers, though." Yeah, they're badass. You know, I have one. I have one too. I don't think it's like yours, but it's Man. that size and. They gave you a paper that you can carry yep. on. You, you, you have to keep like it on. Pack. Yeah, like you a passport keep it. or something. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to keep gave it me on. Some books too. You gave yeah, me some books that I, I haven't uh, opened up. They still are in plastic. There's a, another question. Let's see from String Snare. And I meant to make you my moderator, but luckily I slowed this down because sometimes people go crazy on these chats. I'm still learning this, just like learning when we start filming. You know what I mean? Anyways, questions after traveling to Dagestan. Will, do you desire mountain life versus city life? It's It looks like a, a tough life, but more satisfying. What was your takeaway from being in the mountains compared to like a city life? Well, to me, that's like the country in America, but I'm a city guy. I'm New York, LA, Chicago. I'm in Chicago right now. Like I'm a San Francisco. I'm city, city, city. I love the noise. I love the smell. I love the, the crime. <laughs> so I love <laughs> I like city. But the reason why is because you got to understand who I am. I'm a You're a creator. You need footage. Yes, I need inspiration. You know, like that's just how I am. So, yeah, that is the countryside with the rivers flowing and all that other stuff is beautiful. But, yeah, I'm city, man. I'm a city guy. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to look at this one. To Will, thank you, Anatomy of a Fighter, to Coach. We love you. Never been there in AK, but it feels like we've been there with you. All the best. That's from Zishan Javed. And, uh, you know, my pronunciation, they're probably like, Len, you butchering names up on here. So let's see. Um, okay, this is a question for Coach. Let's say, Coach, um, has Islam's training camp for RDA begun? Also, what factors is the focus point for him on the camp? Ooh, good one. Um, I, I'm a... Uh... 100% his training camp has started. Uh, you know, um, the focus obviously is going to be with Islam, not the same as Habib, because Islam's good everywhere, where Habib was just good boxing and he got good with knees. And, and the last fight, Habib was starting to kick, you know, so he was starting to get the whole, you know, complete uh, fighter type thing. But Islam has been the complete fighter for a while. And uh, we are going to look more and we'll all discuss it together. And the beauty is this, okay? 
this is the beauty that people will understand this when I say it. When we were fighting his last fight, you know, we 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 said we were we were going to stand with him. We're going to stand outside, do the matador like we we did with uh, Dabi Ramos. Up, mm. up, up in Abu Dhabi, we're gonna fight that style because Islam was really good at that. We're gonna we're gonna stand with them and avoid the ground. And the beauty about Islam is that the day of the fight, when we're walking, I I watched them walking around, and I saw how big Islam was, and I said to Habib, I go Habib, I go, why don't we just change the game plan and just go father's plan with this one because. I really believe Islam can smash him on the ground. I go, what do you think? He goes, no, coach, I think so too. I go, let's just switch it. So we switched it. With that being said, what I'm trying to tell you is we can go with the stand-up plan, and then we can switch it that day, and we can do that with Islam. So if we can go stand-up, we can go father's plan with the stand-up. We can mix it up. We can do whatever we want with it. So the best thing I can tell you guys is Islam's training in all areas, so he's going to be able to showcase everything, stand-up, ground, Father's plan, everything, everything, everything's going to come into play, you know, and more likely we'll probably go father's plan, but don't expect that to be the only option because we can actually just go the matador plan too. That's a great question from Muhammad. Let's see what I got here next. Mr. Harry, ah, Mr. Harris, in a crazy world we live in today, watching anatomy of a fighter is my escape from reality. I've had similar comments on some of Javier's um, footage too. People live for this stuff. You guys do something that takes people with your videos is that is that what you do it for in the end to make people feel what you're doing right well i, I just wanted i wanted to and how can attest to this and so can carlos do his photos I, I wanted to be the fly on the wall and show people the life of these guys that no one ever really sees um and then not only like how i've said like not them training them at them opening fan mail and their reactions to it and things like that. And obviously with me, it's a, a little more different because it's, it's more cinema, cinema, but it's the same thing in the sense of providing content for an audience that, you know, the gym is sacred, Lynn. No one, I do. Goes, you don't see what goes on yep. in the gym. This started yep. to happen when YouTube came around, right? Huh? Right. So the fact that, listen, Henry Hoof told me this the other day where he said he had to have a talk with all his fighters about allowing cameramen in the gym because everybody got a cameraman now. So he told <laughs> me, no one brings somebody in here with a camera unless we approve it. And the only person that can come in here is Will. You see what I'm saying? Because he's family. And yeah. it's the same, it, like that's years of bondage to where. So the fact that we have able to give fans and like fans of these fighters, not just fans of fighting, fans of these fighters specifically. Habib is not from America. He's from another country. So people from all over the world get to see what he's doing in America. Like that's crazy, right? In the old days, he just trained an AKA. He fights in a root form. Right. Now, Hob can tell his daily story of these guys training or now Habib being a coach which is, it seems like people more interested in seeing that part of Habib now. You know, it's this it's this fascination between Habib and Hob. When they gonna lose together as a team? <laughs> like these people are crazy. Like, uh, like, yeah, you know, him and I together as a team, I don't. It's not in the plan, is it, Hob? No losing. <laughs> no, when Habib and I <laughs> cornering together, cornering together. Yes. We, I don't think we've ever lost. No. Not together, not cornering together. together. We've lost okay. individually. Yeah, but we haven't lost together, and I can only attribute that to how great of a of a coach Habib is. He's an unbelievable uh, coach, and like I said before, with time, I see him being the greatest coach of all time. Also, not only is he the greatest fighter, he's also the greatest coach of all time. If his desire stays as strong as it is right now, if it doesn't, that's different. You but like you like Phil stays, Jackson. You like Phil Jackson. Uh... Hob, and then he was like Steve Kerr, like his, he was yeah. the, Steve Kerr was like Phil Jackson was the coach and Steve Kerr was the player. And then all of a sudden Steve Kerr become his, becomes a great coach. Yeah. This that's Habib. That's Habib. That's Habib. Yeah. That's Habib. And, Straight yeah. up. Straight and listen, up. perfection is so rare in sports. It's the only reason why it's only been one 
undefeated NFL team, the Miami Dolphins, right? Yeah. And the reason why it's only been one team to ever lose single-digit losses in the NBA, the Warriors, right? And they yeah. still got to the title and lost to LeBron James, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, perfection is so minute. So you, you don't expect to ever be perfect, but you damn sure don't want to lose. And I, I think that's the thing. It's like you can see the passion in y'all. When they be showing y'all in the corner in these fights, I'll be like, yo, the intensity. How Habib slaps the canvas every time it's a win. It's like he's looking like I'll do him a nap, man. It's, yeah. it's so funny. Like, <laughs> witness that stuff. I always have to calm those guys down. I'm always ready. My hand's always ready to go, hey, come down, come down. You know, yeah. I, anytime <laughs> something good happens, I'll be jumping up out of his chair. Uh, yeah, you the calm. You're the calm, oh, yeah. you're the calm. I, all those guys I have to do that with. Every one of those guys. I, I'm ready. I'm already, I'm, a, I'm already watching the fight, but I'm ready to go, sit down, sit down, sit down. Yeah. You know, yeah. They all do it. Zubaira, Manap, Islam, Habib. There's not been one of those guys that I haven't been – in the corner that don't get all excited and get out of their seat, you know, which gets us in trouble. So I'm always have to be the calm one all the time, always, yeah. every single time. And I'm yeah. looking forward to the day when they're not doing that, but I don't know anytime soon, I ain't going to happen. They go they're crazy. Emotional, man. They, oh, they... very, cause it's their brothers. It's, I mean, they're literally love each other. I mean, they're like literally everything they do, they do together, you know, and well yeah. knows you've been around Glenn, you know, you've been around these guys. Yep. They're a family. They are a family. There, there is. I mean, that's why when you get in trouble with one, you got in trouble with the whole pack. It is. Yeah. It isn't one of those things where you can single one out, man. They all like, especially if you think you can jump on Habib. Oh yeah, go uh, ahead. DC, DC, love give, tell saying that. Listen, you they go jump you. They jump yeah, you. Yeah, they'll jump you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember one time DC was goofing around. And, and and they they swarmed around DC and I kid you not, it was a joke. But I could tell, I could tell if they got serious with Habib, those guys would have jumped on DC. Yeah. They would have yeah. jumped on him. And 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 the only reason why I might be safe is because they all respect me. But it, it, but if you turn on on, on Habib, oh man, oh, not good. I, I I got a question for Hob. Obviously, early on in his career, it was always this Habib and his weight and will he make weight or these issues and the injuries. And he, I, I remember the stories I used to hear about AKA like, you don't want to train there. They just they go so hard. They just hurt each other. How where did you start to see like the switch where he's the, the nutrition and the health? Everything started to get on the even plan. Well, you know, what happened is. uh uh, it's all a bunch of bull, how all this started with Dana White calling us the Stone Age. And then a, a stupid, uh, one of the writers, you know, he did a, 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 a you know, a, a, a chart, right? Mm -hmm. And in his chart, you know, he had people that never even trained with me and would come to camp one time. So they listed him as AKA guys. And then he had guys that trained at AKA. They never got injured at my gym, but they got injured, let's say, American Top Team or Greg yeah. Jackson's or whatever. But those injuries that happened over there were counting for me. Oh. And I'm like going, what kind of bullshit is this? Yeah. This guy wasn't even with me. <laughs> and then you call the injuries for me. So I, I was – so in other words, we weren't as top as what they're saying. We were actually – we were up there for darn sure. We were, but we weren't yeah. the top. We were not the top. We, we were – there was a lot of people right with us, you know, ahead or behind, whatever. We weren't, we weren't far ahead enough above like the, like he made it look out to be but he gave me credit for people that didn't even belong to me yeah. you know and, and when you look at the list and you look at the the amount of fighters they're talking about you know i mean how 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 come aka gets the credit for a guy that wasn't with aka when he got injured but he comes to aka but those two injuries he got counted for you know total times someone get injured Lynn, it's those, there's those Lynn, is those pre-existing injuries. <laughs> you know how it is, but it's like they used to call him like the gladiator, Jim. I'm not even being mean or anything yeah. saying that. No, that no, was, no, no, no. But that's, it was the other injuries. Now we know the story. How media but spins that's how, the narrative. That's how, that's how it started. But then, but then the reality, and this was I was already thinking way before any of this is there is too many injuries happening. So I started doing a thing where I would talk to the fighters. If you didn't have a good night's sleep. 
I don't want you sparring. If you gotcha. don't want to spar, I don't want you sparring. If you had in a fight with your girlfriend, your 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 father, whoever, I don't want you sparring. You know, if you know you come right. in with an injury, you come in with the injury, and you want to spar, you better let us know so we can assess whether you can spar or not. Yeah. And I started having these talks, and believe it or not, our injury rate dropped. Uh, I would say ninety percent or more. Damn. Yeah, that much. Because people would come in tired and, and they think, well, I'm just going to wake myself up. Well, that's the wrong time to wake <laughs> up. You know? you know, I'll tell you another one. I'll tell you another one uh, that this happened is uh, this one fighter named Andre Filo. You know, he's a really good fighter, you know, and I never used to have him spar with Habib, you know. And uh, I said, I was looking for a real spar with Habib. This is after I had this talk. And he goes, you know, he goes, I'm looking for a sparring partner for Habib because I want to spar. I go, okay. So I had him spar with Habib. The very first thing that happened, Habib shot in within a couple of seconds, shot in, picked him up, slammed him on his back, messed up up his shoulder blade on his back. He was injured. He was out for quite a while. His comment was, damn it, Hob, I should have listened to you. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, I didn't want to spar him, but I, I thought that I'd never get to spar him ever again because I've always wanted to spar with him. I go, I go, man, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Go, Why the hell are you doing that? I go, yeah. you know, you, if you wanted to spar, you should have just let me know. But you didn't want to spar. He goes, yeah. Well, and that's what I'm talking about. It's yeah. happened more than one time. And ever since we've avoided that uh, scenario, and a lot of guys are speaking up. And I tell them all straight up, you guys don't need to spar three times a week. Yeah. You can spar one time a week, you know, and, and be great for the fight. And But if you don't want to do it, you should never do it. Yeah, go light sparring then if that's what you want to do. I rather I rather than go light sparring, going to the fight with the mental strength, versus going and beating each other up and and going out injuring themselves and now going in with no confidence. You know, it's sure. much better. So you people have to want to you know uh, spar. I recommend sparring because there is no better way to get ready for a fight than to fight. You want to get yeah. ready for a fight? Fight. You know, yeah, you have that any, new any idea, right? right? What about these yeah. guys that don't do it? Like, hey, I just stay ready and loose. And then, you know, they well, had some success, but then the next time well, it's not continual. Thing. This is the thing. People like I say Max Holloway, right, who doesn't ever spar anymore. But he doesn't really need to anymore because he's had so many wars. All he's got, he's here. He's great there. He don't need to spar. He could yeah. just go light, work mitts, and he'll go into the fight fantastic because he's, he's injury-free. But yeah. his mind's super strong. His muscle memory's there. He's got everything he needs. So that's a different scenario. And I tell guys, like like when my older guys, I say, hey, you guys don't have to spar if you don't want it, at least once a week. But even then, you don't have to if you don't want to. But they all yeah. want to. They all want to at least once a week. But again, a, you ask, them another, ask another question because you might have one. I just I don't have you on here before. I figure you might have a question for Avi. You got anything else in there, Will? I got more here, but I just want to see if you had any. Obviously, you can't pick. You can't pick your favorites. That's like asking a parent who's your favorite. But in terms of Kane, DC, Luke, and Habib, which one was more surprising about their success in terms of becoming a champion? Was it any of them, or was it one that's like, damn, okay, I see he could have been Kane champion, but. You were surprised maybe of how quickly he became champion or how, you know, like which one? Uh, I knew Habib was going to be a champion. I knew Kane before anybody was going to be a champion. And DC, after I trained DC, I knew he was going to be a champion. Um, Luke, man, no, same thing. So I know, that's what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> I, I, I thought all those guys were going to be champion. I saw something in each one. They're all different than what I saw in them. Yeah. But I thought they were all going to be great. Um, but I guess, no, no. I thought Habib was. I thought Habib was special. I thought I said, hey, you know, you got one thing in common with the great Muhammad Ali, who I happen to think is the greatest uh, to me, the fighter of all time. And I would tell Habib, it's not because of what he did in in the the ring fighting; it's what Ali did outside that, to me, is why I admire him the most out of any any boxer that ever lived is what he did outside that, that made me love that guy, you know? And uh, I told Habib, there's something in it with you and I don't know what it is, but, but something you're in that, that kind of realm, you know, and look where we're at now, you know, where we're exactly where I thought he would be. So that's why I really can't, you know, 
can't say nothing. I thought, uh, I guess, I guess if you can ask, this is the question, Will, did those guys accomplish what you thought they were and, and did some of them fall short of what that full expectation yeah, is? Then I would say, yeah, for darn sure, I thought Kane should have been the greatest uh, heavyweight of all time, all time, hands Lucky down. Injuries. But injuries got him and, and just wrong things that got him. And Luke Rockhold, uh, I hate to say it, but he never fulfilled all the greatness that I thought it was in him, you know, yeah. and for whatever reason, you know, whether injuries, whether mental, it doesn't matter. He, he, those two didn't fulfill, but the overachiever, the overachiever was DC. Yeah. DC was the overachiever. He became, I thought DC was going to be a great one, but I didn't think he was going to be one of the greatest pound for pound fighters of all time, which is what he is, you know, and uh, that, that I didn't expect. So, so, you know, to be him a champion, yes, to be one of the greatest all time, you know, pound for pound, DC is. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't foresee that. No. I got a question. I got a question for Will. Um, okay, they says ask Will about Dagestan basketball. You're a basketball player, former college, headed to yeah. the pros, and you're you're, you're kind of a real basketball player, American style. You go to Dagestan that. basketball. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's interesting. It's, it's amazing how it's gained a lot of notoriety over the last couple of years, but I've never seen no stuff like that. That was pretty crazy. Like these guys is full fledged putting guys in submissions and real submissions to like tap, <laughs> just get just to hold somebody down. And I was experienced it. I played it. I literally, I have a picture on my phone. If I can find where my knee is the size of a basketball because it was that swollen because they was just taking my legs out. They was taking my legs out. It's, it is it's the most – and they do it before they train. I'm like, what, yeah. the, what yeah. is that? Well, you know that, Lynn. You watched it. Yeah, I filmed it. I just wanted his take on it. They, they, they go out of bounds. They tackle you out of bounds in the darn hard floor. And, I mean, there's no – the only thing they don't do is punch. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Punch Dubai, Dubai had it custom made though. They had the mats, right? When yeah, we were over yeah, there. They but they, they go out of bounds. Good. They were going out of bounds and taking each other out of bounds, taking each other down and stopping each other. It's it's just darn out crazy. Into the bleachers. And I'll tell you, you, you think, well, they don't know how to play basketball. Yeah, they don't know how to play basketball. But you don't know how to play Dagestan basketball either, either. So don't think you can because you no, can't. You, you we're can. all thinking we can. We really can't because there's an art to what they they're doing. They were so little, though. Like, it's like flies. Like, yeah. But they just grab your legs yeah. and you're done for. And it was like, yeah, yeah they were thinking, me. Yeah. We're thinking you can get violent, right? Oh, we could do that or we'll just elbow you. But no, they're not trying to hurt you. You they know, call, they, they, they thought I was – Khabib said – the thing he said to me after that game, he was like, brother, I thought you was good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a couple of AKA fighters challenging Habib to basketball. He's like, I next time basketball. I see Duran win say that, like, Duran, you don't, you don't look like you even know how to play basketball. Don't even try that. Like, you, you better stay away from that because it's going y'all going to really be wrestling. That's all that's going to happen. But I would like Duran – if I was to go back over there, I'm taking him with me because he a wrestler. So he able to, you know, you need mass for that game. You but can he other. make the baskets at the same time? He's That's just your enforcer. Problem. He'd have to clear the way for you, and then you make the baskets because they're Listen, running. I don't know. I mean, I mean, swears that he's Steph Curry. In that footage that I got, he probably missed 30 shots. All of them missed 30 shots. But when they make that one, ha, huh, they're going to find you with your, where your phone ain't there. They're going to find you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you gotta make sure you got it. Make yeah. sure you got that make. <laughs> There's a, another question from Drew W. Mr. Harris, uh, pick your favorite episode or best episode, Anatomy of a Fighter, and why? what makes it special about the others? And I know that's a hard question, but I don't know if top two if there's not one or top three if there's not one. Well, I would say the Dagestan Chronicles, obviously, because that's what I'm known for. That changed my life, essentially. But I will say that I had like I don't know, man. I, I would say just now looking back on it, it would it would just be seeing all these guys before they they became what they were. So if I have to say what my favorite one is, I, I don't know. That's too hard. I got too many. I got hundreds of videos online. Like I can't pick one uh, specifically. You know, that's just too hard. <clears throat> I get it. 
Greetings from Dagestan, from Sham S. I'm glad you guys are talking about my republic. That's pretty nice. So you got people from Dagestan tuning in to the guy that made them one of their favorite documentaries. That's pretty nice, man. Let's see. People were asking about Umar, but he's going through a knee recovery. Um, let's see. I'm looking for something here. What's his What's his return table like, Pop? Huh? Um, well, the last time I saw him is when they were here for training for uh, the LA Bellator event, and yeah. he's coming. He's coming close. He's coming real close, real close to being ready to go. So I'm thinking. He might be ready uh, December, December, January, February time frame. I'm what expecting about, that to happen. What about Abu Bakr? Uh, him, maybe same timeline. Well, we'll see what's going on with him. He's still not 100%. I got a question about Abu Bakr. Because obviously, he he, obviously he had the, the disappointing first fight in the UFC uh, to his standards. What did y'all do? Because he looked so amazing on his feet. And he was, it was rave reviews about his striking in that next fight. Like, what did y'all focus in on? To, or did you, do y'all feel like y'all had enough time with him that first fight? And he, he was able to prepare more for a second one? Um, well, me personally, I wasn't with him for that first fight. I, I was not with him at all. No. And, and I hate to say it. But I will say it. I'm I'm his like security blanket. To be honest yeah. with you, uh, he he does. Track. He yeah, I keep him on track. I get his confidence up there, and and he he him and I bonded together. With when he's with me, he's he's at his best. And and, and um, this last fight before he you know broke his nose and all the other injuries happened, he was looking so good, and people were going to see a better version. Of him in this next UFC fight, but uh, unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. But uh, you know, he he needs me because I I've been working with him mentally and uh, for a long time, and I've been getting him to 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 you know relax and feel confident in what he has. And, and by doing that, I take away his confidence by not letting him play with the big boys. Yeah, if you understand that concept, yeah. he yeah. can play with the big boys, but I just go, no, 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 don't worry, stay over here. Relax, we're safe, you know, and he's looking at me like because he won't disrespect me. And if I tell him that, he'll stay on the sidelines. But he's but he needs my approval. So he goes, Coach, coach, please let me let me go. I go, no, 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 no. It's okay, stay here. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And and it eats him up, right? Because he wants to show me he can compete with the big boys. And I know he can, but I'm holding him back on purpose until he really just you know pushes me to do it. Then I let him do it. Then he goes out and performs, you know. And I've been doing that uh, to him for five years now. And it's gotten to the point where, you know, he's gotten really good on his stand-up. He's gotten really good yeah. on the ground. Everywhere he's gotten <clears throat> really, really good. That would have been an amazing fight, him and Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have yeah. been an amazing, yeah, amazing fight. fight. Yeah, amazing. yeah. It was, it was, it was going to be his toughest fight to date. And uh, he was ready for the fight. And Rodriguez was going to be a tough customer. It wasn't going to be an easy yeah. fight. But – he was ready for it, and and it wasn't like he's gonna go father's plan right off the bat. No, he was stand with Rodriguez. He could stand. Yeah, that's he why could, I was ready to see the yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. He was standing. Fight. Yeah, he was standing with everybody over here, and and really he was beating these guys up. He got a, He got a beautiful. He got shot. really yeah, good body shots. Yeah. Uh, he he just became all the way all around uh, an all around good fighter, real good fighter, real good fighter. And uh, we'll see where he's at and when when he, when he can come back. But but. Uh, yeah, no, he, he really improved. And I will admit, out of anybody, he needed me the most. Yeah. Will, will and I saw the same thing. I saw him go from, uh, I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, we see this guy throwing hands, looking like a beast, Man. focused, nailing Boy, it, it every time. Because we, we, we see, like, video guys. Like I tell Hav, Hav knows this. We, we see things in 60 to 120 frames a second. Yeah. So even though we're not coaches... We make we notice things that a regular guy like, oh, that a camera ain't looking. Better, yeah. See, right? I, w- I wasn't able to see him before that fight, and I saw him in that fight, and I just was on Twitter because I like live tweeting now, and people were going crazy about his stand up, and I was like, that's see, yeah, that's the that's the Abu Bakar that I know right there, like that yeah. how he was talking. So that's a good question that somebody J J asked. I want I want you to ask that Lance so he can hear that. Yeah. Jay Alerno, Coach Javier, would you say Dagestani fighters are easier to train than regular Western fighters since they don't drink and mainly focus on training? Great question. That's that's a great question, and the answer is no. 
they're, they're, they're easier to train. They're easier to train because they're mentally disciplined. Had, and had nothing to do with the drinking. Yeah. And, and and I'm sure I'm sure that that has a lot to do with why some of the fighters don't train right. But but uh, there's a lot of fighters that are easy to train. It's just that the, their discipline, mental discipline, is such an incredible uh, thing with my Dagestan fighters from from when they're growing up. You know, they're they're taught that. You know, so uh, it's the mental discipline I think is is why, not not the other. Well, this is an interesting question. There's a video of DC grappling with Abdulmanop. Who won the match? Abdul had DC oh. in a shoulder lock before the video cut off. Uh, <laughs> that that was that was a play. That was an all play. Uh, uh, they were they was not real grappling. They were just right. moving around, and it, uh, DC was going super super light. But but there was that's how great of a man Habib's father was that. He went in. DC attacked him. It was basically DC went in just started attacking him, and DC's working with him. But but Habib's father knew it was a play thing, so they just went with it. It was it was no serious type wrestling. Habib, uh, you know, uh, is um, DC. I'm sorry, DC, DC would never respect that man, never by doing that. So it was a, a playful. It was playful. It was playful. It was by far a very playful scenario. That was, you know, it was very fun to watch, but but they were playing with each other. They weren't they weren't going serious at all. Okay, and then this is one right here is for Will. Are you making episodes next uh, with Islam? Of course, we have we had that. But this goes back to the beginning, but we're we're answering it at the end because we know how it goes, man. It's like I got I only at one camera. I'm in twenty places, but go yeah, on. Yeah, so unfortunately, the last time he was here, Ali was bugging me about uh, why I'm not filming. But I, I had family stuff going on, family stuff that I had to take care of, man. You know, I had said not too long ago, and how I know this, for the last four years, I've gave my life to this sport. Honestly, I haven't really, I've been more selfish towards that than spending time with my family. And I've been traveling all over the world, following these fighters around, yet I rarely go home. So around that time they came, I just had to go home, man. I had to be around my family, and, it, and I loved going home. I, I was so happy that I went home. So I had to miss these guys here, you know. Um, the the time before that, when uh, they were in Vegas, Hob understand what was going on. I talked to him about that, where I was yeah. just politics and shit that I just didn't like. Not in terms of the guys, but right, that other big conglomerate you know so um it'll happen it, it, it'll happen naturally but you know yeah I, mean, I, I get it i get it people want to see islam on my channel like it's about islam i get it it's gonna get millions of views i totally get it but if i was someone half you know that was only about views and attention and subscribers you know i'd have been to ak a million times i'm just get on the plane to come to ak yeah it, not about that it has to just be naturally you know i just wanted yeah. to be natural and the fact that i haven't filmed these guys for over a year or so or more almost two feel like two years now um with the covid yeah yeah with the COVID, that changed uh, everything that yeah. changed everything that right there the momentum i could tell by your comments on ig i go man he's going through it too i can no, feel no, you, no. you, you know like, what I mean? the world shut down you could listen, yeah no i know that's what i'm saying like the easy. momentum of oh Maybe I need to pay attention to what's important in my life you know what it was? more than my camera. I, I had saw Hob Nim in, in uh, Vegas for the press conference. Amazing week again with the Dominus MMA Media Day and all this other stuff. And then I, the last thing of my video, the last episode when he was there, Hobby was like, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Boom. <laughs> to the yeah. Camera, push the camera and then boom, the world shut down. And obviously yeah. that shut down. And then obviously with Abdul Manap and, you know, I had talked to Habib only one time leading up to the Gaethje fight. And he just was like, brother, I want you to come to, uh, you know, to Dubai. And, and then, you know, honestly, it was like regular things, but then the USC started changing everything. Certain number of people could go or some, it was some lot of craziness that, yeah. you know, it is what I, it is. I'm with but, you on this. I'm with you. There was yeah. also a snake on the lurk over yeah, there, so, too. There was a snake there. Yeah, yeah that, the video that of was, it. That was crazy when you had said that because I, <laughs> when I saw you in Vegas and I pulled out the video, like, what? 
This got millions of views. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what, what I like re- anything. I re put it up. We should give him a shout out. Nah. Someone asked me, Len, where is Carlos? Yeah, where, is Carlos? Where, where is Carlos? Huh? We're asking you now. Uh, I saw Carlos on the 101. It looks like he was packing his uh, fruit juice uh, stuff, driving somewhere to make more fruit. I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, Carlos has businesses uh, that he has to attend to, and, and unless Habib and them request his service to be here yeah, filming, he got stuff going on. Yeah, he's he's a he's a businessman, and he's a very successful businessman. Yeah. So he's out there doing business that he has to do. Uh, uh, he does come and film when Habib and them guys are here. And Brian also, he you know, he has a job, you know, and, and uh, he can only come when he can come. So right now, there's nobody yeah, here. Has 20%. Kids, right? A son? Yeah, he's got two kids yeah, or maybe like- more. He's got two boys that I know of yet. So, you know, Brian Brian works for the airlines uh, or the airport, 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 I believe. And uh, he does his job there. When he can, he comes, you know. And Carlos is a businessman. He owns... Uh, I don't know how many businesses Carlos owns, but yeah, he's Carlos part of, got his hands in a lot of he, stuff. He's got his hands in a lot of hey, stuff. Hey, Carlos sponsoring fighters and all types of yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carlos, Carlos got a lot going on. Yeah. How do you like how'd you how was your relationship getting in? I know you love him, but what was it like getting to know Carlos for you, Will? We know him, we've seen him every day. So we're getting like Well, when I first you know. met Carlos, he was annoying because he was just this big ass guy in a way at 223. <laughs> taking photos and video he was double timing he was like it's like yo but we had a lot of downtime like sitting in the hallways waiting for these guys because you know man Hob, you remember them hallways at 220 they like i said they are like werewolves yeah they just don't sleep they just all in one room and uh me and me and carlos will go eat breakfast like carlos is one of the best people i met in the sport man that's a good guy man. he's a good guy man well, he's also, he owns businesses. He's Habib's part-time bodyguard from when too many people want autographs. And he's a photographer, so he's a Swiss Army knife. He's doing it all. But we're going to have him on here eventually. But uh, just showing the relation, this is what's been fun about the podcast, is tying in the, the videos to the people, the people making the videos, the people making the big documentaries, and, uh, you know, how we all bumped into each other. It's the story behind the story. It's like the director's cut, you know what I mean? When you yeah, sit yeah. back with the people... Like Javier's one of the video guys, even though he's a coach, he's like more than just a care. He's like three things, you know, four things. But it's it's pretty crazy. You know this 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 uh, podcast is the longest one we've ever done. Damn. I know. I, I did like, Joe Rogan for three hours. Yeah, this, <laughs> like, we never. If we you usually average an hour, and we're pretty much. I'm pretty much. Ah, let next get off. <laughs> Hi, what was the, what was the hardest part about? shutting down the famous aka during the pandemic and then just being forced to just be away for a while like being in another country and not even in, in well the, the hardest part was no income <laughs> zero income yeah. uh the, that was the hardest part because your rent was still due you know and, and we didn't do the option of you know paying x amount we paid the full amount so having no income and having to pay you know basically over 30 grand a month with no income that got pretty hairy you know for a yeah. while there it was like yeah. darn you know am i gonna close am i not gonna stay open but i yeah. i you know what i believed in myself and and i did what i needed to do and and uh uh you know habib comes around and coach let's go to D- dubai we're, we're gonna train blah 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 and it, it allowed me to to function and be able to to live otherwise that, I'd have been too. like a lot of other people yeah i'd have been yeah. like a lot of people been when would have probably folded up the gym and and uh habib kept me alive you know it was yeah, insane I mean, it was insane the part of not making the rent is what, what was really uh the bad part you know um yeah yeah it, it was tough that was tough i I'm, honestly how hard was, did that hit you bro that was a sink or swim moment because like, like you said, Lynn, you was rolling, rolling. Right, man. right. Boom. Listen, I'll tell you this. I had projected out a situation. So, for example, in a month before COVID happened, me and Kamara Uzman went to Saudi Arabia. Just me and him. We went over there, got hosted. <clears throat> Basically, it was audition for me for the Saudis. They wanted to see me at work. So that's why I went and I was requested to go. I did what I had to do. So one, I'll tell you this. This is life changing, huh? 
They wanted me to go to Saudi Arabia with Mike Tyson for eight days. Wow. In April, after the Tony, Tony and Khabib fight, right? $400,000. Man. That was going to change my life. That was going to change my life. So then COVID happened. The Habib-Tony fight, I would, I would say... From everything, all those episodes combined, I would have made a nice chunk of change that I could have lived off of for a minute, right? Yeah. Um, we all know the subscribers would have shot through the roof. I'd probably have been in a million if that fight would have happened, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so not only did I, I would always, I always told people like I probably because of COVID, I missed out on like my probably most successful year of all time doing this. Probably like half a million dollars because yeah. of that. That that once in a lifetime project. These are rare, where you get hundreds of thousands of dollars to do something. And my brother Ali took care. You know what I'm saying? It was all listen, hopped down to the point where I sent the wire, the wire information. Yeah. Man, man. So I feel for I feel for you, buddy. That's listen, tough. It's a lot of stuff that I want to do outside of filming which is like i want to start my own production house with camera rentals light rentals like you know co put put stuff on co where I, I can make a residual income monthly where i, I can make fifty sixty thousand dollars not even touching a video i just renting out equipment so when that happened i was like finally i get to start my co business it killed us and, and we still dealing with it you see what i'm saying like yeah, I don't really post a lot of videos. Like I have a lot of videos, but frequently I post like once or twice a month. That's about it. So I have to post something very good, and I explain this to people all the time now, Hop, because I used to keep it in. But if I do it, if I come to AKA tomorrow and I film Hop beat a ten minute video or twenty minute video, and they get a million views, that's two grand, man. It's not a lot of money. Every fighter is not going to get you a million views. So when I do a 30 minute documentary on a fighter, I'm doing that because I'm, I'm, I'm telling the story, but a hundred thousand views is a lot of views, but on YouTube it's two to 400 bucks. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So oh, we know. people say, man, what's going on with anatomy of fighter? Where you been? Where you been? And I'm like, listen, man, I am blessed that I created a platform that, took off and the world knows but you gotta do what you gotta do man <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you gotta spread your rings maximize your potential so you can not only be passionate and do what you love but you can make a living off of this because it's not easy to be like listen brian got a job carlos got a job right i'm retired will harris, will harris is all in i stopped my wedding business where i was making i was in living in florida doing weddings got employees and I'm driving Mercedes and living nice because I got this, my income is set. I got it done. But I said, you know what? I'm not going to do none of that. I'm going to focus on this because you have to, in order to grow what I did, you have to focus in on it. And now I feel like I put in five years of this and I'm at the point in my life where it's like, I have to get the fruits of my labor. I planted those seeds and now it's time for them to grow. So that's where I'm at with, what I'm doing and anybody will respect that. Like, listen, you, like, like I said, Habib wanted me to get hundreds of thousands from the Dolly footage and I never got that, you know? So it's, it's one of those things where it's not about money. Cause obviously it's not because I've been doing it for free for so long, but I'm at the point of myself where like a lot of people have told me in this industry, you got to put on your business hat. Now I start thinking like a business guy, you know? So I think that's where I'm at with it. And, that pandemic got in the way of it and I it, it, it caused it, it hit you but it also like some of um hobbs guys they just stopped fighting yeah. they just left the pro fight sport yeah because there was going to be too much time in between not putting their names out but you had some guys just go take regular jobs right and they're they're gone you know i'm trying to think i don't know well, one's a wrestler, oh, yeah, one's from a, guys, one's from overseas. Guys. Yeah, yeah, the Lord Bellator guys. guys, probably a couple of Bellator guys. They just stopped fighting. Yeah. Well, I don't think it had to do with the COVID, though. No. No. There wasn't well, any shows. I mean, maybe an overseas guy. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's you know, listen, he couldn't you know, come over here, but other than you, that, the, the wrestler what, guy, no. You know what's funny about this sport is that, like, Dana White said something not too long ago, or he said it a long time ago, but people it, it'd be posted. No, he said in press conferences sometimes after fights. He's like, I've always told people, you got to be the craziest person in the world to want to be a fighter, right? So it's like, this is what you chose to do as a career when injury is so apparent every day you train to you're not going to make a lot of money if that ever and you want to be a fighter and it's like when i think about it in that sense it's like you have coaches don't make any money gyms don't make money like that for the for because you don't come across you don't you're not there's rare Javier Mendez is once in a lifetime where four champions is going to walk through that gym. Yeah. It is what it is, right? I agree. You get lucky like a – I wouldn't say you get lucky. But no, no, it's luck. Sense. A lot of it's luck. Yeah, but like uh, Trevor Whitman, he don't even have a big gym. And you get Gaethje, uh, Rose, and, and then Usman decides to go to you. So now you – Well, the, the difference between him and I is that he, they – they actually were already somebody. They come to him. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I built my guys. They they were there. Yeah. Well, the exception of so it's, like, it's rare. It's it's sort of like you being, like you know, the Milwaukee Bucks won the championship this year, right? Giannis yeah. onto yeah. drafted late draft, like built drafted all those picks and built it a, a, a franchise, a dynasty. The Warriors did that, drafting Clay Thompson, drafting uh, Steph. Drafting Draymond Green, drafting all you know, all these guys and they built the dynasty. It's rare. So in that sense, it's a lot more bad times than good times in this sport with stress and men, like mental stress, depression. I see it a lot, man. You know, I, it's a lot of UFC guys I know that drive Uber Eats and Ubers. Like I'll be in Vegas and catch an Uber from the airport and it'd be a fight. Yeah, like, a lot of them uh, because it's the like, easiest. It's the easiest job for them. They yeah. they they work when they want, and and actually for those fighters that are listening, you know, aspiring fighters, Uber, Uber, Uber Eats, or Uber in general, any one of those uh, type of uh, delivery type, whether they you drive somewhere, you bring food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, those are the best kind of jobs for you guys to have because you can put in the amount of hours you want. Yeah, your schedule. You it's your schedule. Yeah, and sure. uh, that's that's the best. Some of my fighters here do Uber, and uh, some of them, you know, they're, they're obviously – they're some of them, one, of, one of my fighters makes over 100 Gs a, a year on yeah. Uber. Over 100. Ain't no jo- yeah, ain't no ain't no job. He's got no. that driving cardio. He can drive. He just <laughs> drives. I mean, you know, he and he drives and he drives, but he's here training all the time. When he's supposed yeah. to be, the rest of his free time he spends on Uber. So and, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, and, and what I'm saying to the fighters out there, uh, Uber Eats, Uber Uber driving, you know what uh, the other ones too. Like, what is a uh, Lyft, right? Yeah. Whatever, whatever they can do, those Bro, are the type yeah. of jobs you want because they don't tell you when to work. Yeah. You know, you wow. need to take time off. You you want to go two weeks off, two months or whatever. You you got it, no problem. Yeah. So that's what I'm that's what I'm saying, Lynn. It's like. The pandemic crippled us, but you got to figure it out, right? You got to, yeah. and you got to be, ble- and I'm, listen, man, I'm prideful, Lynn. I'm not one of those Patreon, GoFundMe. Listen, I could call Ali or Khabib or Uzman and say, yo, right. God, I need a favor. Right, it's hard for me to do, Ha. Huh? It's hard for of me to, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's hard for me to, well, yo, it's man. Because you, you, you were an athlete like them. You're still athletic. Yeah. But I you were going, you were on track to play pro ball, and you know the story in basketball as they know it in fighting and the ups and downs. I listen to your podcast, man. You went through a lot of ups and downs, as I have, which must be common for a cameraman. I don't know yeah. what it is, and I'll talk to you off camera one day. We'll be like, oh, I did all the same stuff you did, a lot mm-hmm. more than you think. It, it'll crack you up. But I know you've been through a lot not, of ups not, and downs. Not that one thing, though. <laughs> not, that one. <laughs> not that thing. <laughs> Don't tell them what it is. We don't even know what it is. <laughs> this is a quick quick one for Hob, and then I'll tie it up because this is the longest ever, and Hob CBD is starting to work from Jacob CBD. I need Did you that. just take some? <laughs> did, you take, did you take some? I haven't had any yet. Oh, going to get some. Going to get Will Trent putting out the Jacob CBD. 
Oh, okay, okay, I got it. Coach, is there a fighter you would have wished to have an AKA? Uh, no. No, I have enough. <laughs> what a quick answer. Bam! I mean, it's like it's not a hard uh, decision to make. I have all the fighters I need, uh, and um, I, I never I never aspire to go and get somebody else. No. Uh, someone asked me a long, long time ago the same question, and they kept asking, so I – I gave him an answer like Dean Lister, you know, I think he could be great to talk correctly. That, that's how long ago that I actually gave a name was Dean Lister. And anybody knows Dean Lister, he never really materialized as a fighter. I think he did have a fight or two. Did or great in jiu-jitsu world. But, oh, he was uh, a great yeah. jiu-jitsu guy. Yeah, but, yeah. But he, didn't, uh, he didn't transfer over to a fighter. So uh, he was the only one I've ever talked about. And that was man. That was over ten years ago that it, that that question was asked, and I and I gave the answer, and uh, yeah, and, and I only gave that answer because they kept asking, not because I really thought, oh, I want to really train the guy. I really don't care to train anybody other than the people that have come to me. There is a quick question for you, John Smith. Why aren't there more Mexican champs like Moreno? Oh, that is a good question. Yeah, right. Damn. Well. I don't know because I mean, like from Mexico or just 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 Latin champs in general. <clears throat> I guess. You know, I guess maybe Mexico. Maybe Mexico. They're not allowed to be from other parts of South America. I don't know. Well, I mean, <laughs> you got you got you got Alvarez. You got you you've had you've had your share. You know, Henry Segudo. I mean, and yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's 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 enough. There's enough. It's That's just Kane. you know. I mean, there's enough. It's just. Um, yeah, Kane. That come on. That was all of Mexico. Mexico at heavyweight. Well, Kane. Kane was well, from USA. I mean, what is he talking about? Is he talking about Mexican champs? Meaning Kane? Okay, so uh, we've had more than than most people. Most 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 uh, nationalities. Yeah, you know? one finna fight for a title. Uh, Juliana Pena, right? Yeah, Juliana Pena. Yeah, yeah. She's. Yeah. I don't know if she's Mexican, but she's. Uh, I think maybe Venezuelan, maybe. Okay. Uh, but she's Latin. She's Latin, mm -hmm. and and, and uh, yeah, no, I, I think uh, get yeah. you, Cop. We get you, Hav. You were a Mexican champion. There we go. We made that easy, right? Let's see. Quick question for Will. Big Will in the house. We love. We love. Uh, we will all love coaching AKA staff. What was your first impression coming to AKA compared to other gyms? Because you did go to all the gyms, so you answer this better than anybody. I said it I when I ask. went. Before yeah, before we get out of here, I said it when I I went. Um, Leading up to what fight? Leading up to uh, bef like it was the prelude before we went over to uh, to Dubai. Um, that was the first time. What was noticeable? It wasn't downstairs. Is when we went upstairs, hop to the bike room. Oh yeah, bike room. Yeah. Oh my! And it's an epic video I made of all the sweat. And I used to see the videos, and I got the and it was so gross. I was telling Carlos like, yo, this is the nastiest shit. That I ever been in, like, cause I had no shoot. I should have had. Did I, I had socks on, and I shouldn't have had some of them socks ocean on. ocean footies, those little yes, rubber ocean and, booties. Yes, and I should have just <laughs> took my. I should have took my socks off, so I could just. It was so gross in these socks. It was so wet in there and humid, and I was like, I see why these guys. I was like, I could cut. I could cut twenty pounds in one week in here. I just come in here and film. Yeah, I had the same experience. Filming in AKA, I always felt like I was getting a good sweat on. I'm, like, I'm just holding the camera. I like this workout. I don't have any lactic acid so build up in the muscles. It's so many rooms AKA. It's like every, down the hall, it's a little workout room here. Over here, I was like, how many damn rooms is in this place? <laughs> what, did you th what did you think? What did you think about it? Like, did, what was the difference between that and other gyms? Like, the style? It was, everybody was grinding. It was no, I didn't see no play play. It was nobody playing. And that, you know how Habib is now? He was like, hey, 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 let's go. Like, you know? Right. Um, yeah, it wasn't no joke. It, it was, and then, you you know, Ali trying to hang out with, hang with the big boys. It was like funny <laughs> footage, bro. Just <laughs> He's still that way. He's still, Ali is a crazy guy. He, he'll get, he'll put it on with anybody. But listen, I, that's yeah, not, he's crazy. Yeah, he is if I crazy. tell him, if I tell him, hey, Ali. You know, and Kane was sparring. I go, I need you sparring Kane. He goes, okay, yeah, coach. Good. He'll do it. Yeah, He'll, He will do it. He's not going to sit and go, I ain't sparring Kane, coach. He goes, okay. That's why he had all these surgeries, though. Yeah, he'll go. he go, you want me to spar him, coach? I go, if I say yes, Ali will go, okay, I'll do it. 
I'm not joking. Always missing his neck up. Oh of yeah, because he's just he puts himself. I mean, you he's the challenge master. That guy. You, yes. you can't. You cannot challenge him, and he won't accept. He'll accept. Always we need we. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. I, I need one more, more, one more question. I always, I always laugh at these trolls, and I'm like, y'all have no clue what tree y'all barking up. No, <laughs> don't bark up the Ali tree, dude. That's nah, that, that, yeah. that, that, <laughs> that, that, that tree gonna get some willows branches and whoop you just with the branches. Don't yeah, let the tree man. fall. Y'all no, crazy, like, yeah. like oh man, he he because he he managed all these big bad fighters. I'm like, he's a bad fighter himself. Y'all watch my content. Yeah. Like that ain't playing. He's in there. Uh, really I got I got some stories about him, about real life scenario, what, how, what kind of a Superman he is. You know, when it comes yeah. to that, y'all yeah. don't y'all mess with Ali. I'm I'm not joking. Y'all yeah. mess yeah. with Ali. He, he's uh -huh. a bad man. He's a <laughs> bad man. He 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 he's, he'll tell you right to your face. I've seen him right in front of me. I introduced him to a friend of mine, and Ali's like, "Weren't you the guy that did this and this?" And I'm my mouth dropped open like, I I. He, He's talking this way to my good friend, and my friend's a badass. And Ali don't care. He said, you know, he's like talking to him, like, "Hey, weren't you the guy that said this about me? This and that, and that." And I thought Ali was gonna be, "Hey, nice to meet you, bro. Hold it within himself." If you know, but no, no. If he got an issue with you, he's gonna let you know right then and there. He don't care you know, who you, you are. You know, one thing before we get off here that I, I, if I ever needed a favor from from Javier Mendez, it might be. To have you try to talk to Scott to open up and do like a day in the life, not at an event, but outside of event, because y'all be doing, y'all be going to get coffee together. Get them together. Get them together. You know that's the saying? that's like, the I'm origins, like, bro. Bob, I might have to get uh, Scott Coker on Anatomy of a Fighter, bro. You want that? that? Yeah, I'll, I'll fly out there and, and spend like a day with him and just get inside. I'll, I'll, the I'll do that as soon as we hang up. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think I think I think it'll be really good for him. Yeah. I think it'll be really good for you. You can follow him. How he, how yeah. simple, how yeah. simple he is. He's yeah. not one of these flamboyant promoters, and he's not flashy anywhere, man. This yeah. guy is as true in his heart as you'll get, and yeah. and and he's hardcore to, uh, like his friends. His friends that are his friends forever are still the guys that come around, hang around him. He, he's yeah. not I this. Would, I would, I'm hanging. I'm hanging with the the. The the the, the uppity uppy. Nope, he's like down below. He's those are his friends. He still hangs with those guys. That's yeah. how he is. He's a very think, interesting. I'll do that. I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I, I think I'll it's great too. There. Yeah, I'll fly up there and just spend a day with him and just. I'll, I'll do that. I, I, I'm actually and I'm gonna meet him on Thursday. So I'll talk yeah, to just him do it I, there. I, yeah. And I think you should do it. I think you should do it. No, I think he, it'd be great. I, I truly believe. One thing that I will say about Bellator that I am vocal about. It's like I'll say something like, yo, Pitbull and Aaron McKee is fighting, but it's no – where the series at? Like, people should be following this in real time. I'm like, I don't know if it's a – but it can't be a budget thing because it ain't that – it ain't that much to charge Will Harris to do it, if that's the case, if y'all don't want nobody to do it, right? Yeah. They they This would be happening, Hob, a lot because I get the feedback from people. They think that Anatomy of a Fighter is a produced team. So they like, we can't hire him or them. <laughs> and I'm like, it's one person. Yeah. But they is consistent sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They be like I, I, I think I think that's a good good move. I'm gonna I'm gonna highly suggest that to him and yeah, see what I his thoughts are. Because not enough people know who he is as a human being and who he is as a great promoter. Because he's a great promoter, man. A lot of people don't know that. And that's because he's not out there. You're not out, you know, and he is, he is all of that. And I think Hob, you this what I'm highlighting that would be good. But this is what I would do, Hob. I would go spend a day with him. Then I would got, probably pick five or six fighters in Bellator and interview them and spend time with them and then get their opinion on Scott and Bellator. Yeah. Like it's something that I truly wanted to do that because I, I haven't really done anything. I've done stuff on Bellator fighters, but I'm like, bro, I, I watch his press conference. I'm like, man, I want to meet this guy. Yeah. Yeah. It would I only help in my opinion. It would only help. Quick question for Hav. Movlid. Movlid. Uh, yeah. Cause yeah. he's fighting. We got to give this. Out my so we my have opinion of Movlid and who is Dagestani and fighting the PFL. Movlid is one of our guys. I'm the head coach for him. And my opinion is his fight is coming up uh, this week. I believe he's going to win. I believe he's going to be in the finals. And I believe against him it's going to be uh, the wrestler that, that uh, they both beat the same uh, last year's champion, both 
both Mobley and, and uh, uh, I forgot the other guy's name, but he was Arizona State uh, all uh, uh, national champion, two, two division was a two time national champion uh, from Arizona. You know who I'm talking about there? Um, PFL. I can look it up. No, no, he's he's wrestling from Arizona. He's oh. in the PFL. He, he they both beat. Oh, I, thought, I was going to say Bader because he went to Arizona. No, no, State. no. They, but the literal guy, the, the smaller guy, he he he, uh, he was on fire for a little bit. He got into the UFC. He, he got cut early, and then uh, you know he he made. Uh, I mean, wait, I don't know if he was in the UFC. Why did I forget his name? He's so well known. He I mean, about Bubba Jenkins? Bubba Jenkins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bubba Jenkins is a beast, though. He He's a beast. beast. So He's I, beast. I believe it's going to be uh, Mobley and Bubba Jenkins. Yeah. And, and uh, that's going to be a fight. And, and, of course, you know, I, I favor Mobley because I'm Mobley's coach. So I favor Mobley to, to win that one. But Bubba Jenkins is no good, no joke. He's no, good he, everywhere. No good the everywhere. He dominated, the way he dominated Lance Palmer this year, I, that's when I was yeah. like, and, and and the way he dominated, Mobley did the same thing. Out wrestled him. Yeah. So so now you got a situation where who's gonna die? What you gonna out wrestle me? Or am I gonna out wrestle you? I don't know, man. It's gonna be a toss up there. So that's gonna be a fight. And uh, uh, Mobley, Mobley, and uh, Bubba Jenkins are gonna be in the in the finals. That's my prediction. And of course, I I gotta take my guy because he's my guy, and I never vote against my guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in all actuality. I think Mobley Mobley's uh, got a great chance to become the, the you know the PFL champion this year. He's he's last, a beast. Last, last, Lynn, last Go thing I, I got I got to have him answer this. Good because people are gonna watch this and it's gonna grow over time. Why is there no female fighters at AKA? Um, that's actually a good question. There there has been some, and they just don't come here. <laughs> they just don't come here. I mean. They really do. They don't come here. We have a yeah. couple, uh, but but we don't really have a consistency. Uh, I mean, heck, let's put it this way: Misha Tate came to us way back in like two thousand seven or eight mm-hmm. when she was when she was barely beginning. You know, she was in like Bella uh, Strike Force. She was in Strike Force. Okay. She came. Uh, one of my coaches, Jesse Grego, befriended her, and brought her over to the gym. Uh, she didn't last too long with us, and, and uh, yeah, no. No, I don't. I don't know. I welcome women for darn sure. I I hundred percent enjoy watching women fights. They're they're yeah. entertaining as hell. You know, women fighters to me as a whole, as a general as a whole, they give their heart out more than the men do. As a whole, yeah. I'm not talking yeah. about all the men. I'm talking about if you're talking percentage wise. I've yet to see a woman go out there and not give it her best. They yeah. all give it their best. That was a good one. That was awesome to have you on. The Javier Mendez podcast. Like and subscribe. Follow Big Will over. We'll follow at, y'all. Get, oh, get this follow channel. him. Get follow 100K. me. Get this channel. Get y'all plaque. Y'all deserve y'all hundred k plaque. Man. We're working for it, man. And uh, you know, you've showed the roadmap for it. We've seen what you could do. Um, I've learned that I want to do the podcast. I moved out of state. I'm no longer there. I used to live Where there. Where you at? I'm Where in North you Carolina. All right, yo, I was going to say, I don't know if you want to give up your location. North, North Carolina. I'm over, okay. I had to move by the beach, the affordable beach. Yeah. Uh, 32 years of California can beat a camera guy up. So, you know, I do miss Javier. I do miss being in the gym with him and uh, having lunch with him every day. And it's like the podcast thing has gotten, it's growing. It's getting more momentum. People are finding it. And it's like. It's, where, it's, it's, the, it's the future of content, though. That's where everybody going. Well, listen, you middled out the movie studios. We're middling out the TV and the radio station. I mean, it's the yeah. same thing, right? And then you're a great guest to have. I'm sure this thing's going to do some pretty good numbers. People will be interested. And if you ever want to put any clips, I'll send you the copy of it. But uh, like and subscribe, Anatomy of a Fighter. I mean, you know, he'll, he might he has so many followers, you might not notice if somebody's new. <laughs> maybe, maybe you will. You stopped watching when you hit a certain number. What number do you stop watching the channel grow? Is there a number? I want to know because I'm not there yet. When I first started this, I had friends that were YouTubers, and I f- found out about the hundred thousand plaque. That's all I wanted to get. Oh, you can get a plaque for a hundred k? I mm-hmm. got a hundred k. Then it was like the next plaque is a million, so it ain't like no five hundred k. It was like, <laughs> hey, no, what kind of? Okay, it don't matter if you got five hundred or seven hundred thousand because you ain't getting another plaque. But I will say, I did not intend on being around this sport this long. Because I got other things I'm trying to accomplish in storytelling. 
I would probably say once I get to a million, I'm going to probably taper off on being around a sport, to be honest. Um, yeah. It's just, it's thing, I will always do something with fighting. Because think about it, Hop and Lynn, I built the platform. If I posted three videos a year, it's just adding to the platform. Right. I, I do documentaries. I don't just do videos. I do doc. But but that's that's the beauty of your platform is yeah. uh, when you do the documentary, you, you already built this platform. When you get to a million, I mean, gosh, you know, what better way to, to advertise your do your documentary than on your own platform? Yeah, you know, that's, and that's, that's, that's so, why that's yeah. why you can't give it up when you're when you're at you're at what where, where you're at right now. Yeah. You'd be foolish to give up that because you're throwing money away. You know, you're throwing yeah, money away. And as much as I hate to admit it, we if Len and I did it on a much, much smaller scale, we're throwing money away also because yeah. we can use our platform to continue to grow, grow. Uh, subscribers. Grow. And and, and, yeah. yeah, we're helping people. And, and also, too, talking about helping people, you know, I, I want to wish uh, Trent Winters uh, a very happy birthday. Uh, your son had... Uh, Contact me on Instagram. Wanted me to wish you a very happy birthday, and and here I am. I'm wishing you a very happy birthday, Trent Winters. Happy I birthday. have a shout out for somebody too that uh, hit up Tony after seeing his kung fu videos. But uh, it was great to have you. I mean, thank you for making the time. Was it what you expected it to be to do the show with us today? Listen, I got a secret. I got something to confess to y'all. Okay. So I started. I started my GSP forty-eight hour fast. So I just needed somebody to talk to. For <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, Hob, I'm almost 24 hours in. in like what's five what's hours. GSP? Is that like George St. Pierre GSP? Yeah. Or? Yeah, he George St. Pierre, a little 48 what? hour cleanse. 48 like hours? 48 hours. You're drinking water, cleanse. though. You're drinking water, right? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I, I got to go downstairs and buy some more from Whole Foods. But, so, uh, how much more hours? So, at 10 o'clock, it'll be 24 because I, I ate fruit last night at 10 o'clock. So I'm gonna do, and so tomorrow at ten to be forty eight hours. Wow, good for yeah. you. I could, I've never gotten one whole day without I've, eating. Hob, I've always wanted to do a twenty four, and I break every time. And I'm like, bro, this is mental. I'm well, weak. Start, start, Man, start twenty four. Start twenty four. Once you conquer twenty four. No, no, I'm doing, 40, I'm doing forty eight. The only problem. But you're not is even me, at twenty four. I know that's in five hours. Yeah, but five hours is like you you said you're talking to us to, to beat up some of that time. Who else are you gonna talk to? That's why I moved the conversation along when we start talking about all that food over there. You see what I'm what? saying? <laughs> I got some listen, I got some jalapeno chips in there right now that I want so bad. But I can't. I just can't do it, man. So I'm I'm I'm, no, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm encourage so you. That, that diet is so hard to do. It's like, you know, and then as you get older, the training the desire to train and keep yourself fit is very difficult, you know, and people don't understand. Oh, just go out and run or just, okay, I've been an athlete my whole life and you're telling me just go out and run. You can't tell me anything I haven't heard, haven't yeah. tried. It's like, come on, I've been there all over that, okay? It's, Aerobics. Whether I do it or I don't do it, it's a matter of me and my mind power, not you telling me yeah, what I need 100%. to do. I, 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 but I have realized over the last two years, especially since Dubai, my body likes the keto life, no carbs. I just cannot consume carbs. My body doesn't respond to carbs no more. If I eat anything breaded, I get bloated. I just like meat. I like fucking 50, 100 grams of carbs or less a day. So I feel like I'm going, this is why I, the reason why I did the fast is because it's the quickest way to jump, get your body into ketosis. Ketosis number, it is the best. Keto is, is I think the right keto foods is the best. I think it's the best. And and you know what? Uh, the intermittent uh, fasting that yeah. that, uh, that, uh, that 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 what the 18, 18 12, to twenty four or, or six or six or the eight hours. There, there's the there's the there's the twelve eight or 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 twelve six. 12, 12, and a twelve twelve. Like a and twelve twelve. There's a twelve twelve. Yeah. Okay. So I do I do twelve eight. So I won't eat until noon, and then I won't eat. But you know the hardest thing is when you travel because it's all messed up. But you know what you can't do? I, I you can change the times. You can change the times. You can change yeah. them. They said you can change them. So so if you're going traveling, just have your eight uh, window period where you eat. So Switch. let's say it's twelve to eight now, but I go over there, and then maybe it's ten to six. You know, or whatever yeah. you can. So just if you manage to do that, I think you're fine. And the reason why I like this one is, 
you can eat what you want, but yeah. they say they say it still comes down to one thing. The great Jack Lane said one thing, and this is what kept everybody uh, that I know that actually kept the weight off calorie, <clears throat> calorie counting, calorie yeah. counting. Yeah. My son has lost over a hundred pounds still to this day has kept it off. Do we still of, only eat once a day? Yep, you see, once a day still. So you know that's called OMAD, the OMAD diet. So that's called o O M A D, one meal a day. So OMAD. I I got famous bodybuilder friends in LA. Famous, millions of followers. I don't, and I always he. I think Mike eats around two o'clock every day, and that's it. Mike O'Hearn? No, Mike Rashid. So okay, I know some of these. He's been too. doing it for ha huh, for five years, once a day, and he yeah. and he said. He don't follow keto lifestyle, but because he only eat once a day, it, it he, his body stays in ketosis. You his know, you know. Let me ketosis. tell. Let me tell you something. The great Herschel Walker, you know, when I met him, uh, I mean, he's a specimen. You know, specimen, and he eats once a day. And I was like wondering how the hell he eat once a day. He got to be lying. He can't be telling the truth. But I was with him for a lot of his fight camps. He, he did two fight camps with me, and I spent a lot of time with him. And there he was eating once a day. Eat once a day. That's it. Unless he binged when he got home, which I know he didn't, you know. But but the man would just drink water, maybe some yeah. juice, and one meal a day. And and his meal a day was very reasonable, very yeah. light, you know. But the guy was a beast, man, and he looked like a beast. I mean, I've never seen anybody look so good in in his body the way that guy did one, for his one, age. One meal a day. One yeah. meal a day. That's crazy. Yeah. I got this one guy. I just going to give him a quick shout out. I have not uh, put myself in the center here. What's up, guys? Uh, Kas Magomed Mutsalov, just want to give you a shout out. I know you get a hold of Tony. We're saying hi to you on the podcast. We'll get questions better next time. This was a special edition. We had to have uh, some great talk. I really enjoyed this one. Hey, if you get Will Harris on your, it's going to go long, baby. I like to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> Javier's like, hey, man, I'm a sprinter. What y'all doing to me? I'm going to hear, the, I never hear the end of it. But uh, there's the guys. The guys want to have you on. They want to do one, uh, Carlos and uh, Brian, one day, just like all the camera guys, your whole crew. Oh, yeah, stories. I'll with those three. You know what I mean? That's the story right there. And, Hav, we get some fan questions in there. You're ready to take a trip. You're heading out, what, this weekend or something overseas? Sunday, Sunday uh, to Dubai and then Abu Dhabi for the fights where Mo, Mo Alarek is fighting and at the UAE Warriors with Fod. Darwish and uh, the great one uh, Abdumanan, you know he he's the greatest host. That guy, unbelievable boss, you know. And I'm looking to spend time with Fod and his family, and uh, you know, watch a great show. The best, what I call the best show in the Middle East, U UAE Warriors. It's incredible. Yeah, show. man. I, see, that's something that I want to do one day too. Yeah, they're incredible. They just do an incredible show. So I'll be doing that. Then I go to Dagestan on September 9th to be with Habib and the whole team. And then I know the majority of the team uh, that are the TV fighters, but I don't know the whole team. So uh, from the video I saw the other day, there's about 60 of them. So <laughs> I'm assuming just because I bought, saw about 60, there's probably 100-something more fighters I don't know. Habib's breeding uh, the next generation and the generation to come. To, so he's going to have continuous champs coming out of uh, Eagles MMA over there in Dagestan. Guaranteed. He's messing with our little hard drives in our head to remember everybody's name. We're like, uh, uh, give me the cheat sheet, you know? Can't yeah, be a pro. Yeah. Can't even be hard. close to a pro sports analyst without looking like an old man Yo, trying to huh, remember with his keys. There's so many fighters over there that you end up seeing somebody get tagged, and you be like, damn, he had a good fight. And then you be like, oh, this kid fight following me now too? He must yeah. have been following me from, and you'd be like, "Damn, how many fighters is it?" There's so many, man. So many. It's just crazy. You know, it's just they're, they're just unbelievable. Then we got October 23rd, uh, Moscow with Bellator event with Fedor as the main event. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and so we got there. Then we go to Islam's fight. Um, you know, we go to Islam fight on Abu Dhabi UFC and Islam Zubaira and, and Tahir. So I got three guys getting ready for that. So I'll be getting them ready for their fight there. And then uh, and that's it for now. Man, we have almost stopped the podcast three times. Follow Will Harris. Coach is like, now, now you're reamped. You went in and now you're coming back up. But oh, yeah, we gotta have, get out, man. We have gotta a safe out. trip. Let us let's, get out. Then let's thank let, you, let's thank let you Will for, suffer. He needs to suffer if he's going to that 10 o'clock. Then the next five hours, he's got to be thinking about what he got to do next. <laughs> 
Th subscribe, everybody. Let us hit that 100K, please. It's not for anything but just a number. Uh, we have goals. I hope you make it. I I know how hard it is, so I really do hope you make it. That's it's, 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 I appreciate uh, it, man. It's a hell. It's a hell of an accomplishment to to go 48 hours without eating, but nevertheless, 40. I mean, 